Blank check with Griffin and David. Blank check with Griffin and David. Don't know what to say or to expect. All you need to know is that the name of the show is Blank Check. We'd better get back because it'll be dark soon and they mostly podcast at night. <laughs> Mostly. <laughs> it's good. Thank it's you. Good. Yeah, good All job. Right. Yeah, A you. somber start. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank to you. an exciting episode. Yes. Of Blank Check with Griffin and David. Just, just right at the top. Let's not do that. Yeah, voice. Blank Check. Oh. What if we got Don Pardo to announce our podcast? He's dead. Don Pardo Jr. Sure. Let's get him. What if Don Pardo Jr. sounded like Blank Check with Griffin and <laughs> <laughs> He is Lights Camera Jackson. It yeah. turns out he's Don Pardo Jr. <laughs> hey, please, don't speak ill of our future guest. Future Lights guest Cameron LCJ. Jackson. We're still, Dave and I are still negotiating Griffin over that tried to sell me on having him on the podcast. We're negotiating over it. <laughs> yeah, it was a negotiation. That's one way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> Who was negotiating over it? Griffin and David, hashtag the two friends. I'm hashtag Griffin two friends. Newman. Yeah, I'm David Sims. Hi. This is a podcast called Blank Check. Mm-hmm. We go through filmographies mm-hmm. of directors. Yep. Who have big success early on. Yep. And then... Get a series of blank checks. I think we should crowdsource the description of our podcast. I think we've nailed it. <laughs> okay, great. And uh, sometimes the checks bounce, and sometimes they fucking clear. They deposit. Right. We do mini series. Yep. Mini series we're on right now is called Podinator: Colon Judgment Cast. Is the films of James Cameron, and today we are talking about his third motion picture, third film from 1986. Yep. We're right now living in the 30th anniversary. The year of my birth. Really? Mm-hmm. I, I, it's, it's true. Well, this I, film, I was... I need to vet that a little more. Do you have a long-form birth certificate that I can look at? <laughs> it's at home. Uh, three, I was three long months... Long form? I don't fucking know. Jesus Christ. It's three months old. I was three months old when this movie came out. Did you see it in theaters? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. I was, I, was, yeah, I was into the Terminator. Movie's called Aliens. It's called Aliens. And there's someone very special I want to introduce who's here uh, for this episode. It is my Everything Bagel <laughs> Toasted with Butter. Because uh, shout out to the members of the Blankies Reddit group. There's a thread going on which is about how they hate. Uh, which the show. is your least favorite moment? Yeah, it's the most popular thread in our new subreddit that we just discovered. <laughs> blankies. Yeah, it's the hot thread, <laughs> which uh, is blown our, up. It's kind Reddit's of... backslash blankies. Yeah, yeah. Red, by Reddit R? R slash R Why slash do they blankies. Need the R? I don't know. They're all R, aren't yeah. they? How does yeah. it work? Work? No, no, you don't. You don't want to say. Yeah, I, I, I just always like to bring the guests in before we introduce them. No, it's always a good mystery. Thing. Uh, yeah, but a lot me people... and our guest also ate a bagel, but not on mic. Right, because I listen to what the fans say, sure, mm-hmm. and I want to give them more of what they don't want, and so I have a lovely everything bagel toasted with. Them. I don't like the look of this everything bagel. I don't like everything bagels in general, but I really don't like the ones that have oats on them. These have a lot of oats, but okay. I so, had an everything bagel, and I do like oats. So on the bagel or just in general? Because I like both. oats in general. Both. What I'll sometimes do is I'll eat a bagel. This is, this oh, is a bad. I'll start. make some oats and I'll pour the oats into my mouth while I'm chewing the bagel. <laughs> All right, cut it out. <laughs> That was that was genuinely gross. Not what you said, just the way you said it. Oh, really? Cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a very exciting guest here today. Yep. Flew her in from Chicago. We flew her in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on our dime. On our dime. I did not Expense pay account. to come out here. No, of course not. No. No. And you're staying at the plaza on our dime. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We said, put it on our tab. We said, put it on our tab. <laughs> put it on my tab. Mm-hmm. And they said, which tab? And we said, the underhills. Yeah, okay, we're doing the Fletch now. I'm trying to just okay. load it all in. All right, I'm trying right. to Dan do... in real life, Fletch. Yeah. Introduce our guest. She writes for Clickle. Works at Clickle. Works at the Onion Inc. Yeah. Yeah. Is it cool that your checks say onion? I always used to like that when I worked yeah, it. Yeah, it is very funny. The check that just says onion. Yeah. yeah. Now, I'm hoping I, hope, I'm hoping I thread this needle, because I've never had to say your last name out loud. Oh, God. This You're is gonna oh, this is going to be I'm going to fuck it up, right? Yeah, you, oh, yeah, d- you certainly are, yeah. Fran. I nailed that. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Her first name is Fran. I nailed yep. that. Yeah. Hoffner? That's really close. Ooh, baby. The P is silent. It's just Hoffner. Hoffner. Okay. Hoffner, yeah. yeah. So I, yeah, I was like, mm. I felt like one of the two was silent. Yeah. I went for saying both at the same time because I thought I'd, it'd be less embarrassing than if I went Hoffner. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, yeah, you did. People usually mess up the vowel. Yeah. They do Hofner or they oh. do Hepfner. No, see, I'm not basic. Hoffner. I wouldn't do that. Hoffner. All right. I'll Hoffner. make mistakes, but that's Hoffner. not okay. Fran Hofner. Fran Hofner's here. Hello. Our pal Fran. Our I pal came, Fran. I was flown in. Yep. It's so nice. First to class? Have a, huh? First class? Yeah, first class. And you had your, your choice of celebrity guest to fly with, so we flew the celebrity guest to Chicago to sit next to you on the plane. Yeah. And that choice was? 
It was my boy Ansel Elgort. Oh God! N- no, I don't, don't like make this me. Bit that All I right. Set up. Yeah, you, right, no, you okay. set it up. He's for not me. on our no, podcast. Fine, fine. We whenever not. we find oh, no, no, a guest, we, we, I won't let him in the door. We let them pick a seatmate. Right. Yeah. But they're not going to be on the show. But he no. just went home then. Yeah. 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 No, he just we, he just stayed on. I don't right? even think he's in New York right now. Oh, 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 old Ansel. Yeah, he's been in um, he's been in Rwanda. Oh yeah, uh, you you posted an Instagram of him hanging out with a baby gorilla that I watch. Yeah, it's really charming. He's there for fun. He's not a little weird. He's there with his family. He's not lensing a new picture. He's just there. A new he's scheme? having. Yeah. When's he lensing a new scheme? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Has he ankled any skeins recently <laughs> in order to go on the safari? This is a trade podcast. Yes. This is a podcast about cinema. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I was like, we're going to discover it right now. <laughs> um, it's about cinema. We've got Fran here. Mm-hmm. Fran's a friend of mine. She's a friend mm-hmm. of yours. We're just me now, but I mean, certainly online friends, yeah. I feel like. Yeah. Off online to a pals. fine start. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I'm having a great time so far. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. And do you like movies? Yeah, love movies. Do you like Jimmy Jimmy C? How do you feel about Jimmy C? Cameron. Um, fine. Jimmy C. Fine. Haven't seen a ton, to be honest. Interesting. But you've seen this one. I've seen this. This might have been the one I've seen earliest and most. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I haven't seen like Titanic. You should check it out. Ooh, Good. Movie. I've seen the first and last fifteen minutes of Titanic. You okay. know what? You should now check out the middle two hours and yeah. forty minutes. Yeah, because here's the thing with Titanic. It's, it's great. very good. Yeah. <laughs> That's here's the thing with, with Titanic. It. Yeah. It'll make you want to jump out of your seat and scream and cry. Yeah, and the thing you'll scream is, "I love the movie Titanic." Yeah, I'd probably love it. I just, yeah, I never. No, no you really would love it. It's really the best. Yeah. I can't believe you've never seen Titanic. I well, remember seeing it at a friend's house when it was in like its two VHS. Course. Yeah, form. and I, I, I owned was it like, in its two VHS form. Um, I remember like the hype, the hype when it came out, and I think I wasn't allowed to see it, and then I just didn't ever see it. And I wanted to go when it was re-released in theaters, and that was another thing of just not getting around to it. And I should have seen it then. Yeah, you should have gone back yeah. to Titanic because the ads asked yes. you to. Mm-hmm. So I, when I, I mean, we'll we'll. If I, I'll well, save we're going to talk Titanic some episode. Titanic. Yeah, I was going to get into my history talking tea, but we'll talk tea later. Yeah. We'll have tea time a couple episodes from now, and we'll have tea two time a couple episodes from now. But this time, we're bringing our A game, and that A game is Aliens. It's not The Abyss. Nope. It's Aliens. No, that's yeah. our TA game. Yeah, TA game. Mm-hmm. Uh, someone pointed out that all his movie titles are either T or A. Yeah, yeah, Other yeah. than Piranha. Yeah. Other than the Piranha, which he didn't get to pick. Right. But it's And he would have called it The yeah. uh, Attack. Right. I don't know. I don't but but you go- Parentheses, you, Piranha. So. Yeah. After Piranha, you go T T A. T A, T two, G D, J D, but still, whatever. Ugh. No, no, whatever. Go on, go on. T L, T L, T. Yep. And then A. Yep, it's true. I yep. mean, I don't count Ghost of the Abyss and Aliens of the Deep, but Aliens A. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, this great. is one of my favorite movies. It's a great movie. Great movie. Yeah. Um. I, w- I like. I would say. That this was my favorite movie of his because for any other filmmaker, this would be far and away my favorite movie mm-hmm. that anyone has ever made because I like it more than most movies ever. But, like, I also fucking love T2. T2 and this are probably, like, tied for me. How do you feel about T2, Fran? I like T2. Is it weird that I know T2 better than... No, I think I was... that's typical, yeah. for, especially for yeah. people our age. I've seen, I, last week when we recorded Terminator, that was my second time ever seeing it in Terminator 2. I've probably seen, like, ten times. Mm. Yeah. Well, I was telling David that I watched Terminator like yesterday into today and I had only ever seen like most of it on TV. Yeah. So there were things. Yeah, I went deep. I just wanted cool. to see it um, yeah. to like have a frame of reference for Aliens. And, and, and good movie, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Go- it's she good. She seemed less enthusiastic. It's, it's fine. Um, I thought, I mean, I don't like it as much as T2. I agree with you. Um, but it's yeah. good. And I was telling David, I didn't know it was as gross as it was. Like, I didn't know about the sex scene because I've only seen oh, yeah. it on network TV. Yeah. And the it's violence. A it's a, it's a yeah. nasty little movie. It and the violence is movie. very, like, cold and disturbing. Like, oh, it's yeah. an upsetting yeah. movie. Yeah. Oh, it's, a, yeah. It's about a man who stalks women and murders them with a gun. And then he bursts into a police station and he shoots a bunch of them, yeah. too. Which it's. Like, with cold yes. calculation. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting. And then there's some business with a skeleton. Yeah. Right. And tech noir. Tech noir, yeah. Um, this film is an interesting follow-up because it has a lot of the same sort of themes and ideas, yeah. but is done in a much more um, inspirational way. Emotional yes. way. It's more emotionally deep, and it's also like you're invested in it. It's a story of triumph, ultimately. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, Terminator is like the success at the end of the film is the character accepting how fucking difficult the rest of her life's going <laughs> to yeah. be. That is true. You know? It's like a very, like, bittersweet ending where it's like, well, the guy's dead. And her life's gonna be fucking hard. The future's not set. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, this this movie. Oh God, I love this movie. So we watched the. But I mean, this movie is. I mean, what? the end of this movie is also kind of like, okay, okay, all right, that's over with. 
I think that's over with. Let's take a nap. And like that's how the movie ends, which is exactly how Alien ends. Which is the same exact ending, even Mm -hmm. though, yeah. Uh, I was just going to say, before we talk about it further, we watched the director's cut, a.k.a. the special edition. Yeah, so did I. So did I, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think everything in the director's cut is stuff that should have been in the movie from the beginning and probably just got cut out because he wasn't powerful enough yet to get whatever he wanted. Yep. Done or whatever. I don't know. Well, they, they wanted more like, of an action movie, I guess. They bought they, at the idea of like a like a two thirty five runtime, and I think they just like two oh two hours and thirty five minutes. Yes, right, right, right. Mm-hmm. I think philosophically they were like this movie cannot be two thirty five, so they made him cut it down to like two twelve like for the sake. Yeah, right. something like yeah, yeah. Two, but no, but it's two fifteen. Yeah, two, two but it's it's a much more organic cut. There's a lot more emotional resonance to it. Mm-hmm. So I just want. So I uh, as we've talked about because this will be a recurring theme in the James Cameron miniseries was a protective uh, uh, mother, uh, shielded me from most action films. And then when I was like... Oh, right. You didn't hear this. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah 10, yeah. 11, 12. His mother wouldn't let him watch cynical works of cinema. Uh, or Rugrats. <laughs> so she was like, cynical. Yes. There was a point in time when I was like 10, 11, 12, where suddenly I had like more autonomy to go across the street to the video store and get whatever I want. I got really into action movies because mm-hmm. it was like this thing I had like not been able to cover at all. So I got really, really into the Alien franchise. And loved, like, you know, that they all existed and I could, like, watch one on a sure. Friday and right. then wait the next week at school and fuck doodle Ripley and then be like, next Friday I can rent Aliens. You know, like, yeah. I had, like, a week to process, like, each movie. Look, that was the way we were when we were the way we were. It was the best. Mm-hmm. And, like, it was much better. Yeah. And I do, I would also do, like, I do triple features. So I remember there was one night where I rented the first Alien, the first Predator, and being John Malkovich. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which yeah, is like yeah, the yeah. best triple feature I've ever created, and I watched those like three in a row, and I was like, "These two fucking franchises rule." I want to see all the other Predator and Alien movies, and then Predator Two. I've never been able to make it through the entirety of. Seen Predator? I've 2? never seen any Predator movies. Mm-hmm. Predator One's great. Predator Two, I also haven't finished. Yeah, I've seen I, it on TV. Yeah, I always fall asleep. Um, but Aliens, I watched and loved. Sure. Uh, watched the director's cut. Sure. Uh, do you own the quadrilogy? I do. I do I've, I've repurchased it on Blu-ray. I should oh. do that. Yeah. yeah. Now I feel like a um, cheapskate. But I had, I mean, I would rewatch it a lot, but I think only ever watched the director's cut because that was the first version I'd seen. Mm. And I was just like, why would I watch the fucking basic, but you, oh, like, but you have a story, theatrical? Right, you have a story. And then my sister, who is, uh, my, my sister Romley, uh, has been getting more and more into film recently. Mm. And she generally does not love action movies or sci-fi movies. So I always relish the opportunity if there's one I think that could get through to her. Mm-hmm. And I felt like the themes and the characters and aliens were on her wavelength enough that she could tap into the movie. Mm-hmm. And so I had to sort of prime her and go, like, don't get caught up in, like, the technical, the world sure, building. Sure. Like, look at the through line. Look at Ripley. Look at Newt. Like, that's the stuff to focus on. That's the story of the movie. And then took her to see it. It was on Alien Day this year. And it was, like, the first year that Fox put all this marketing muscle behind, like, uh, 421 is Alien Day. They're trying to make it, like, they're May the 4th. Because it's 421 is the planet, so they make it oh, April yeah. 21st. And uh, and so they did, like, a bunch of events and promotional things or whatever, and they screened Alien, Alamo Drafthouse, organized it. They screened Alien at uh, Town Hall, and Sigourney Weaver was there. Cool. Mm. And Alison Wilmore, like, did an hour-long conversation with uh, Sigourney Weaver afterwards. Sigourney herself. <laughs> which was great. And I was like, this is fucking ideal. Mm-hmm. Uh, friend of the show, uh Past and future guest Rachel, Rachel Lang, Lang was there along with the Alex Pitts, her girlfriend. Yep. And it was like, she's the fucking biggest Aliens fan. My sister there. Like, diehard audience. And yeah, I was you're, like... You're, he's pumping his fists in the air. Mm-hmm. This is the way for fucking Romley to see it. Great. And then the movie starts and it's the fucking theatrical version. Yeah. And I had never seen the theatrical Which version. Which has a lot less of the character stuff, essentially. That's the thing. Like, the mm-hmm. stuff that I thought would hit her the hardest, yeah. the 20 minutes they cut out are the things that I think would have pushed it over the edge A lot of her. newt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just like, newt. and you miss the scene of Ripley being told that her daughter died yep. at yeah. the beginning, which yep. if you don't have that, it takes like an hour and ten minutes for that to pay off. Yep. Mm-hmm. And if you're like someone who doesn't really engage with action movies. No, no, I, your point is made. It was I, a bummer. It's for sure. But I yeah. realized like when I was watching it, like, oh, I think this is the first time I've ever seen a theatrical. Uh-huh. Because the other films in the franchise, because the quadrilogy set had both versions, I would watch both versions. And with yeah. Aliens, I was just like, why would I no. bother? Like, I've heard what they cut out, and why would I bother? And, and like, the, so... The, go yeah. ahead. Sorry. No, I no, just, just saw... We, we, we get it. Yeah, I saw yeah, yeah. on a big screen, theatrical for the first time, sure. like, five months ago, and then rewatched this last night and was like, oh, this is the best. So, guys, watch the director's cut. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Aliens. It rules. Uh, I've seen it a bunch of times. I don't have any interesting story about it. Okay. I love Alien. I've seen it a million times. I love Aliens. I've seen it a million times. They're, like, my favorite. I've always loved them. 
It, they were like the, some of the first scary movies I ever saw. The first Aliens, like one of your absolute like five favorite uh, yeah, movies yeah, of all one time. Of the first right? Aliens, yeah. one of my right. yeah, yeah, definitely. My my dad was obsessed with them. I mean, it's just sort of always been in my like atmosphere or whatever. I don't know. Like I was always gonna love Alien and then Aliens, and I do. Yeah, They're yeah. great. We're gonna the talk best. about it. Mm-hmm. Fran, what's your experience with oh, Aliens? I mean, it's the same. Uh, it was my mom though who like mm-hmm. loves that. Mm-hmm. Um, your mom's cool. My mom's very cool. Me and Fran got bagels. As like I said, and mm-hmm. we talked a lot about our mom. Yeah, yeah, because my mom was really into like sort of the like genre films of the eighties. Okay. So I maybe actually saw Aliens before I saw the original Alien. Interesting. But they were both sort of like things things we watched, um, and probably also like some of my first like kind of scary. I don't really like scary movies, sure. and I don't think either of them are really all that scary. No, but they certainly I mean, were like, scarier than other things. They're quite frightening. I was if, watching. Right. Yeah, I mean it's effective horror in that a lot goes unseen. Especially in the first half. Yeah, yes. I'd say yeah. Aliens is like a very scary action film. Mm-hmm. Right, but it is more intense than it is like jump scary or whatever. Like, yeah, and know, the thing it has in common with more, horror still. That's not so, it's not as brooding. Sure, mm-hmm. but especially with the director's cut, it is such a slow build powder keg mo- movie, you know? Yeah. It is. No, mm-hmm. it's very, that's true. Even theatrical version, it's very methodical and it's very elegant and sort of just slowly building everything up. So like you don't yeah. see an alien for a while. Nope. The Marines don't enter until 30 minutes in. Yeah. yeah. That's and what I love about it. I love it. No, absolutely. Oh. And then it takes time with the Marines, lets you get them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lets you sort of like feel like you like them or at least sort of enjoy their patter and their like yeah, yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like everything is introduced very much. Metho- I mean, he's, he's a smart man. motherfucker. Yeah. But it's like if you know, if you're talking about the director's cut, it's like a five act structure where it's like first thirty minutes of the film are just like Ripley dealing with PTSD and acclimating mm-hmm. to the world that she's now woken and up. And having to deal with a slightly thirsty Paul Reiser. Right. <laughs> yeah. Thir- slightly thirsty. Yeah, he's pretty thirsty. He's a fucking human thirst trap. He answers his video phone without a shirt on. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. He I answers? love that. Yeah. yeah. He's got those sparkling baby blues. He's like, and he goes like, oh, Ripley. Hi. Like, come on now. <laughs> yeah, come, come on. on. We, they, her name came up on the video phone. <laughs> yeah. This oh, is bullshit. Ripley. Yeah. Uh, he's mad about her. Um, <laughs> Out. <laughs> me? I have to leave? All right. My five own comedy podcast? points. Five, five, five. Uh, I, you don't have to give me comedy points. Just let me say. Uh, that's right. Act One. Act Two is like getting to know the Marines. Sure, mm-hmm. understanding to, that structure. Getting to the uh, LV four twenty six or whatever you know the yeah. The, yeah. The, the the colony. Yeah, mm-hmm. but you don't like, hope. You don't see a xenomorph until like over an hour in. Mm-hmm. Sure, I think they don't find Newt until like one fifteen. Sure, that's something about like right. that. Yep. You know, yep. like the movie really takes its time building up every element and le- giving you time. And here's another thing I fucking love about Cameron, and I think this movie does it the best of all of his movies. He really likes process mm. both in terms of technical process oh, but also just about. like the machinery of how yes. like the the squad works yeah. no, but you know how they'll like attack a situation in the director's cut and this isn't in the act yeah. like all those shots of the bullet counts going down oh, oh is yeah in the, mm-hmm. on the automated guns where it's like i don't know there's something about the fact that we follow it in great detail yeah. like mm-hmm. the rounds going like it could you could just throw one oh, it's shot perfect. at it's perfect. But the other thing that he, he does And is, then he wrings tension out of it. You well, know? And he's, mm-hmm. But he sets it up. Like, he does shit like showing yeah. Ripley working the power loader earlier in the mm-hmm. film right. so you understand what it is, how it works, yeah. getting you into the space, knowing Can all the, like, armory right, right, they right. have. Look, let's slow it down. But let's talk about even just the fucking opening scene, case in point, right? Yes. The opening I of this movie. I want to talk about this. <laughs> yes. Sorry, I, I just looked at everyone very excited. You yeah. mean where, like, where the machine in... comes in and it's like... Scanning, and, like, yeah. Shh, like scanning yeah. everything, mm-hmm. the weird blue light, and slowly taking the time to yeah. like burn the door open, yes, mm-hmm. yes, to it's, solder it open. Oh, you know, it's, it's really so good, and it's like silent. I mean, there's a lot of like sort of ambient noise in this movie. Like the the score of this film is great, but he used it very rarely, which we talked about on James, uh, James the Warren. Terminator episode as well. Mm-hmm. You know, he like uses it as his like Fred Astaire hands to like be a showstopper. But a lot of the scenes, it, they're like you're just seeing people doing stuff and it's Mm -hmm. just clinking it's dripping there's a lot of times this sort of like mm, Mm -hmm. like hum in the background of the ships and everything he's borrowing from alien a little bit which is a very or oral oral yes movie it's a lot of like clicks and a lot of clicking and clanking and and flashing lights that like it wants to explain to you what the flashing light means like rather than just half a flashing light what i find interesting about his use of it here and certainly he's like continuing an aesthetic that ridley scott created in the first one right what I find interesting about yeah. it here is in the first Alien, the crew is much smaller, yep. mm-hmm. and they start getting killed off much faster. Mm-hmm. So the like silence and the ambient noise is a byproduct of like not a lot of people, very yeah. isolated, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in this, even when they're large groups, we'll have scenes where it's like the full Marines and they're like armoring up, 
and they're just not talking. Yeah. And you see them testing the shit out. That's mm-hmm. true. And like, big gun. Yeah. a lot of fucking movies, when people have like, especially now that we're in like a day and age where sci fi and superhero stuff and all this stuff, where you have these like unwieldy costumes, more mm-hmm. and more things are like costume based, right? Sure. And these costumes are like, I can speak from experience, very hard to move in, like weirdly restricting. Oh, you can speak from experience? I can speak wow. from experience. Wow. That's disgusting. Carry on. Yes. I'm excited you. for you. Everyone go rate and view the tick. It's done by now. Yeah, well. Oh, is it done? Well, by the it'll time be this done episode, by the time oh, this airs. Done, yeah, the yeah, window yeah. will be over and well, I'll know whether yeah. or not I have Hopefully it. you have a job. We'll see. Yeah, hopefully. Kind of yeah. like how in the episode we recorded yesterday, they weren't here for a while, we were asked to predict the uh, result of the election. Oh, yeah, we recorded an episode Whoa. yesterday that will come out <laughs> until after we know whether or not America and, has died. And me and Griffin got very quiet yep. and like, oh, uh, well, yeah. I hope things went well. Like, you know, like. Oh, it felt like a scene from Aliens. You could hear the dripping and the clanking and the humming in the background. Um, mm. No, I just love that there's, like, you see the testing out of the machinery, and he yeah. has the characters, like, not talk. But it also is, like, he takes the time to explain to you, like, how each gun works. You yeah. know? There's mm-hmm. the long scene where, like, Hicks explains it to Ripley. But also just, like, that thing with the turrets. You know? It's, like, turrets. you understand the system. You know mm-hmm. where they are. He doesn't have to cut to the aliens. The first turret sequence, they don't even cut to the fucking aliens getting shot. They just look at the screen. No, we got And you. it's cutting between the... Love it. It's good. Okay, so the movie opens with... Well, let me give you some backstory. Okay. Let me give you some context. Okay. So Alien came out. Mm Mm-hmm. Good movie. 79? Correct. Yeah. Uh, Medium-sized hit, but like, you know, not like... I mean, it was a blockbuster. I guess it was a big hit, but it was, you know, it was still like a weird, gross, violent And it was very expensive. That's another thing. It was very expensive. It was very expensive. It was 20th Century Fox. It was an Alan Ladd joint. Crazy Mm -hmm. old Alan Ladd, who we've talked about on this podcast. We love Alan Ladd. Green Light Laddie. and Robert Altman's dreams and yeah. doing all kinds of weird shit over there. But this is coming two like years George after. George Lucas comes in and barfs on his table and he's like, make Star Wars. You know, <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Yeah. This is two years after Star Wars. Like George Lucas comes in and is basically describes like an acid dream to him, like where it's like the journal of the wills. And he's like, it's great. We're going to give you so much money. <laughs> um, yeah. So he's crazy. He gets, he leaves. But, but I'm just saying this is two years after Fox Greenlight's Star Wars. Sure. Oh, you mean you're talking about Alien. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the first one. Which I think is important because it's, like, definitely in the wake of, like, oh, sci-fi, sci-fi. And then Ridley Scott delivers a very different type of sci-fi movie. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But, you know? But it's special. And they famously, not to merchandise spotlight here, but, like, developed a whole line of toys for Alien. And then the movie came out. Everyone was like, I, kids can't buy this shit. And they, like, took everything <laughs> off the shelves. They, like, canceled or, like, retracted everything. Okay. Because parents were like, no. I'm not going to let my kid play with some penis-headed alien. <laughs> All right, so Alan Ladd leaves. Fox is like, the new guys are like, no, we don't want an Alien sequel. Then eventually, after a while, there's new, newer new guys, and they're like, we want an Alien sequel. And they see the script for The Terminator, mm-hmm. which is crazy. They don't even see the movie. And based on that, like, they, they, I mean, they say, do you want to write Aliens or you want to make Aliens for us? Cameron, like, he's, he isn't even making The Terminator yet. He's getting ready to make The Terminator. He, like, secrets himself away, and he gives him a treatment. I don't think he gave him a full script. It's like a 45-page yeah. treatment. I was talking about it with Rachel Lang the You're other You're brushing day. over yeah. the infamous story. Uh, I, I just love to brush over infamous stories. The original pitch, he goes into the Fox boardroom, a bunch of executives. Oh, yeah, right. There's yeah, like yeah, a yeah, chalkboard yeah. or whatever behind him. Yeah. And he walks in. Whether or not this is true, yeah, yeah. it's a perfect James Cameron myth. It's exactly what you want to believe he did. Walks into the room, chalkboard looks at everyone, hello, hello. Yeah, yeah. Silence, ambient noise, humming, right? <laughs> Picks up the chalk, you hear the clank, very crisp audio, well mixed, right? <laughs> Picks up the chalk, and he writes the word alien on the board. He turns around to them, and he goes, yeah, you get it? Yeah. And then turns back around, puts an S at the end of alien. Yeah. And then looks at them and goes, like, huh, didn't see that coming. Huh? <laughs> and then turns back around one more time, puts the two lines through the S, makes it a dollar sign, <laughs> and then drops the chalk. And the urban legend is that's the original pitch, and sure. they were like, sure, write a treatment. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, that was the meeting to, like, approve of whether or not to commission him to write a treatment. It is a good idea to pluralize this, the name. Yeah. Maybe the best idea ever. Yeah. And then that's to make it into a dollar <laughs> sign. Yeah, well, I didn't know about that part. That's pretty yeah. cool. It's a pretty bulletproof pitch for a movie. You, I mean, it's like, that's the two things you need to know. Right. Like is the that block. there's more than one, and it'll make money. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think of, yeah. <laughs> That's a weird thing people don't do when they're pitching movies yeah, is promise that it think, will make money. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, guys, I've thought about this. I feel like people don't yeah. care about money as much. No, the, I'm just kidding. The, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, you know. Yeah. No, movies these, aren't about money. Yeah, they, Hollywood's about art yeah. these days. They don't, you know, they don't really care about franchises or brands or anything like yeah. that. Certainly not money. Uh, now, um, folks, I got a weird, a weird uh, hook for this movie. Here's my idea. <laughs> I'm thinking it's going to be a big hit. A cha-ching. 
<laughs> I want people to love it and pay money to see it many times. I'm just trying to think of, like, what's a movie that was a big hit? Uh, Titanic. Like, if someone went in and was like, Titanics? Like, yeah, just, just the idea where, like, you know, that you would pluralize something just in some nonsensical way. Gladi- put a dollar sign. Gladiators. Like, yeah. you know, like, dollar sign, dollar <laughs> sign. Uh, the mummies. And then you're like, oh, oh no, it's wrong. Uh, fuck, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So he writes his treatment. Sean the sheep. Sean the sheeps. Sean the... Let's make a joke about the fact about that plural. Sheep is yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's good. Okay. Damn well, What'd right. you think? It's okay. Yeah, I agree. He writes his treatment. Yeah. He They like his treatment. Yeah, because it was good. Yeah. Sigaroni mm-hmm. Weaver. Sigaroni yes. Weaver. Sigaroni and cheese. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Sigaroni and cheese. Um, sits down with him and he's like, he pitches her in some way or another. She wasn't that into it. He pitches her. She's into it. Yeah, she was like, I don't want to make another but one. Every time she's like that. Yeah. Every time. Every time. Except now when she wants to make one with fucking Chappie. I know. I and mean, why does she want to do that? And just to be clear, we're not being reductive. <sighs> Chappie is now attached to direct that film. <laughs> Neil Blomkamp Neil has dropped, dropped out. Off. He was like, look, Chappie, yeah. he's a filmmaking machine. Oh, I can direct the new aliens. <laughs> oh, I'm a real gangster. <laughs> Chappie, he sounds kind of like that. Oh, I'm a real gangster. You know, I'm Chubby. You, you can't even say his own name right? I'm um, Chappie. sounded like you said Shrubby. <laughs> I'm Shrubby. <laughs> All right. That's my mediocre Chappie impression. So he pitches her on, like, you're going to be this sort of, like, woman warrior type. Like, you're not going to be, like, sort of the scared hurt lady running around, like, the bowels of the ship trying to escape. And it's about motherhood. It's about motherhood. It's about motherhood. He might have, like, done the thing with the dollar sign. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was like, is there a chalkboard? Like, yeah. <laughs> He wrote the word mom on a chalkboard and then, and then made it moms <laughs> and then made it a dollar sign. <laughs> no, that's the pitch to Alice and Jenny whenever mom's, you know, <laughs> mom's tanks. Mom tanks. Jesus. All right. Um, and then he takes this Vietnam thing, like, and plasters it on top that's of it. <laughs> that's why dad's bombed. No dollar they sign? didn't do dad first. <laughs> Oh, I see. Okay. All in due time. You have to escalate. I barely remember what Dad's was. It was the show. Oh, it was with Martin Mull. And Giovanni Ribisi. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Seth Green. And they all looked pretty sideways mouth on the poster. They were doing a lot of like, hmm. Hmm. Going to look it up now. Anyway, and then he, he he gloms this Vietnam concept onto it, yeah. right? Like, like it's in, you know, buffed up Marines in enemy territory, like, who do not understand, like, the terrain, the enemy, mm-hmm. like, who are, like, over firepowered and under, you know, intelligence. Those are both words. Yeah. Uh, and whatever. Like, right? He Like, I feel like this is James Cameron's big idea. It's like, we need to make a sort of fucked up Vietnam movie as a sequel to Alien, which is not like that at all. No. Alien is basically a movie about how space is a job now and it's kind mm-hmm. of boring and a pain. And when a monster gets on your ship, mostly people are like, like, can we change my contract so that like the monster deal me dealing with the monster is reflected on it? You know, like, you know, like they, yeah. they get a distress call in the first part of Alien is them being like, No, I, there's nothing in the profits from about a distress call here. Like, you gotta give me a new contract. I'm not gonna go on some planet just because there's you know. I love that about it. Though. Me too. It's the that best. It's just the like best. people trying to do their job. They're just like, Jesus, we woke <laughs> up out of the fridges <laughs> yeah. just because they're like <laughs> So mad it's a horror movie that it, that's what it becomes. That's what as, I, as like how people should be. Right. Like, ah, oh, we gotta get killed now. <laughs> do you think there'll ever be like a studio genre film where the cast looks as tired as they do in Alien? So like, tired. Alien, oh. they're just so run down from the opening scene. The second mm-hmm. they wake up, they're like, Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, wow. Poster for dads? Yeah, poster for dads. Poster a lot of sideways dads. mouth. A lot of sideways mouth, but a puff. Giovanni I mean, is doing yeah, that. Puff going, I forgot about oh, that. Boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Uh, they should have put a, a word bubble around him that said, ooh, boy. I think the show would have done better if they'd done that. Um, the thing that's great about Cameron, and Cameron has made two phenomenal sequels, right? One, T2 and uh, this? Yes, yeah. one to one of his own films. Three if you count Avatar 2, which is a sure thing. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. 100% <laughs> pet the farm on it uh, when it comes out 45 years from now. I would Correct. love for it to be amazing, though. Of course. I mean, it, I, I, it yeah. better be good yeah. or, or I'm going to be mm-hmm. mad. I'm going to be disappointed. I'm going to be the one person who's disappointed. I mean, I don't know if you've said this on the podcast yet, but I quote it all the time when, like, uh, we were talking one day about, like, the fact that it's, like, five Avatar sequels. Please quote me. And you were like, I don't think I need five Avatar movies, but if James Cameron <laughs> tells me I need five Avatar movies, I need five <laughs> Avatar movies. That's how I feel. At this point, I trust him. If I need, if he's telling me I need five of them, I need a full James five. James Cameron, he, yeah, he knows what I should eat for dinner, lunch, yeah. and breakfast. Yeah. Backwards. Yeah. Um, he uh, has made two great sequels, one to one of his own films, one to someone else's. Sure. Uh, and then one that hasn't been made yet, but we're already uh, sure is a masterpiece. Um, and the thing he does 
with both of them. Mm. Sequels are a weird art. They are. And I like they're tough. You know, while they're tough. He's actually made three sequels. P.S. We are forgetting Piranha Two this morning. Oh right, mm. which is not a good sequel. Yeah, it's not. I like Piranha actually, yeah. and I don't like Piranha Two this morning. Um, the thing uh he does in this film is lateral move. Sure, you know, there's right. the don't obvious try thing. to make Aliens Two. Continue the Alien story, two. make it bigger, just right. heighten, right? And he does make this film bigger in scope than Alien. Yeah, because there was a dollar sign with him. Yeah. Right, mm-hmm. but he doesn't do it as a straight line. He goes sideways. And that sideways happens to be bigger. So he's able to, like, have his cake and eat it, too, where, like, the film is structurally very similar to the original Alien and sort of the rhythms of how it builds, mm-hmm. the slow build to the Alien, you know, then it becoming Ripley's last stand. I mean, all that sort of stuff. But by, like, whole new cast of characters, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. setting it so far in the future from the first film, yeah, mm-hmm. sure. you know, changing genres even to some degree. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. You're able to, like, make... The old, new again. Come at it from a new angle. Introduce it from a new space and have a film that works uh, on its own. And it is like an action film first and foremost, but it's also like it's scary. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. thoughtful. It's elegant. It's emotional. And speaking of mm-hmm. things that are scary, thoughtful, and elegant. Oh, damn. Here there he is comes. one other person we forgot to introduce. We haven't talked podcast. about him. Aside from those three adjectives that I just used to describe him. What else is he? Oh, he's the producer of this podcast. It's true. Producer Ben, Ben Deucer, producer Ben, the Poet Laureate, Mr. Positive, the Haas. Sometimes we pour Manteau into Mr. Positive. People don't like that on the Reddit, though. They don't like <laughs> it on the Reddit, about it. <laughs> Met on that Reddit, though. I'm fine with it being it's a discontinued. <laughs> Birthday Benny. He's the peeper. Been forgetting the peeper a little bit lately. How could we forget the peeper? Well, because you've been in the other room yeah, more he's lately, not so I anymore. don't. See, Ben used to peep at us from over there. He used to look right there. He's... He used to sit in that corner. But I, I, I have like a camera, that. so I you don't can't. Like that? Oh, okay. Oh. I can't watch. But we can't see the camera, so we right. don't know that you're peeping. We can't peep you peeping. We True. used to be who peeps the peeper, and it was us. Mm. Will you get mm. through the name? We used to Mike, look at him I and he'd go God, like this: peep, 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 peep. It never got picked up on Mike, but I did that all the time. Peep, peep, peep. Yep. Uh, he, uh, is not Professor Crispy. No. And don't you dare say it. Mm-mm. What you should say is, hello, Fennel! Please. When you see him. Hi, Ben. He is the fuck master. <laughs> oh, <God>. He has graduated <laughs> to different tells over the course of different oh, miniseries. Jesus. All right. <laughs> Kylo Ben, producer Ben Kenobe. Mm. Ben Knight Shyamalan. You always yeah. say Ben Sait. Mm-hmm. Kenobe? Uh, Penny, Benny Lane. Penny, Benny Lane. Benny Lane, to say Benny thing. It's Whatever still up in fuck. the air. Uh. Ladies and gentlemen, Ben Hosley. Hey. Do you like aliens? Wait, uh, hot Ben. Man, I love aliens. Okay. I actually... I, good, good opinion. <laughs> I, well, come on, Fran. I, mean, I just got I into know, this the episode conversation. Could have gone in a real weird direction if this far into it you were like, don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Two stars. No, oh, it's, it's great. Me. Come on. I mean, and, you know, like, just add my two cents. Yeah, yeah. I feel like this is great because it's bigger. <laughs> well, Ben likes things big. Mm. Oh. I don't know if you know that, Fran. It's bigger, and there's a lot of technology in this movie. And there's more of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. More Which of I, them I've been on record. I like numbers, too. The aliens are bigger in numbers, right? It's yeah. sort of the, the key master's office of alien movies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot of exactly. a lot of keys, a lot of you're yeah. really hitting the Reddit faves. Someone was well, talking because I just keys. read all of it today. So it's very fresh exciting that we have a Reddit. We love Reddit. Reddit's a great site. It's democratic. Nothing bad ever yeah. happened on Reddit. <laughs> Can I also say? <laughs> Never. I mean, I know we're going to get into the plot, but a thing I'm very excited about is this movie portrays the future in a way that I love. I truly love. Which is well, I just like future smoking on spaceships oh, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. They love to smoke on spaceships. They they this. they smoke right out of the. I fridge. always. With both alien and aliens, anytime they smoke, I want to be like, "Are you sure?" Like, <laughs> no, it's is, great, is that though. okay that you can do that? You, you seem to be on like, I mean, what, like a nuclear power plant, essentially. Like, <laughs> there, um, yeah, there's that great moment where Apone wakes up mm-hmm. from like the cryo sleep, played by the great, uh, what the fuck is his name? Oh my god, his name's Al Matthews. Yes, uh, sits up immediately, pulls. A like cigar from yeah. out of frame yeah. that's like pre lit. Like he's just had a lit cigar <laughs> there with. I think cryo his sleep. best. I feel like one of my, I think one of my favorite little moments in Aliens is when she she uses the power lifter and it's super cool, you know, and she's like, "Where do you want it?" And mm-hmm. he goes like, "Ha ha ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Bay Twelve, please." <laughs> <laughs> he does actually give an answer. Yeah, <laughs> He's like, if you could put it in Bay Twelve, that'd be great. Like, <laughs> I lo- I love that guy. He's so so good. It's such a cheeseball role, like the drill sergeant, you yeah. know, and like that way he's he wakes up. Chomping. He's got a yeah. cigar and he's like, marine life is the best life. We're all skillets in the, you know, ham sandwich. I, like, I don't know. He's saying all this nonsense. 
and he he seems like to love it. He really likes to be a space marine. But there is this thing. I mean, talk about he's, he's so genuine. Talk about Cameron. He's a sweetie pie. And how much this movie's obsessed with process, and not just the process of them like trying to fight the aliens, but even just like the fact that he doesn't just have the laugh that then he goes Bay Twelve. Yeah. Yeah. Like he lets no, the right. things play right. out in their entirety. There's a great recurring thing in this movie when like Hicks makes these sort of like quiet jokes to Ripley that he always shows her laughing. Right. Mm-hmm. And you think about how rare it is in movies that characters laugh at each other. For sure. how many movies yeah. have jokes Especially in an action movie or anything like yeah. one-liners. Yeah. But this is a movie where they recognize that like, oh, he's a cool badass saying funny lines. Mm-hmm. He's throwing out action movie one-liners. And Ripley's like, I like that. I'm a fan of this character. <laughs> you know? Well, I think Ripley's also like, she hasn't had a lot of laughs recently. You know? Yeah. It's just when- nice to be with people. Yeah, it's nice to be right now. So, who's your favorite random marine? Do you have a favorite random marine? Uh, friend? Oh yeah, is it Vasquez? Is oh, that... Vasquez is pretty great. Yeah. 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 Uh, what's her I name? Have... Uh, that actress. Oh, uh, I always... uh, Jeanette, Jeanette Goldstein. Jeanette, Jeanette yeah, Goldstein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. One one I of like... the chosen people. She is a, very much a Jew. I yeah. like that about her. I like mm-hmm. her bandana. Bandana's mm-hmm. very cool. We have... Her first line's pretty great to Bill Paxton. What is her first line? He's Have you ever been mistaken for a man? Oh she yeah. She says yeah, no. Yeah. Have you? Oh, yeah. that's great. It's wonderful. Kills it. Love watching her do pull ups. She does great pull up. She's got the maybe the biggest gun. She's got that like rig. The smart yeah, where gun. she has to sort of like yeah. it's anchor basically... it to her like it's hips a... because it's like heavy. It's a steady cam. It's a steady cam. Yeah, and they <laughs> said they put a chain gun on it. And yeah, yeah, like she has to sort of like swing it around yeah. and it's fused to her body. Yeah, they call it the smart gun. It's the fucking coolest thing that's ever been in a movie. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Star Trek: The Next Generation. Uh, yes, mm-hmm. that came out the year after Alien. Okay. Aliens mm-hmm. is 86 and Star Trek The Next Generation is 87. Mm-hmm. And they were going to have a character called Macha Hernandez that was a ripoff of this character that we are talking about. Yeah, Jeanette Goldstein's character, Vasquez. Like, they were just like, we need a cool, like, Latin type, you know, yeah. Latina, like, who's tough. And then instead they cast uh, Denise Crosby and they called her Tasha Yar. Gotcha. Uh, who's, like, uh, very blonde and very. She has know. a teardrop tattoo. She does. I love that. That's yeah, really very cool. cool. It is interesting. This movie like plays. It is funny that Jeanette Goldstein is in real life this like lovely Jewish mom, mama type who right. owns a company that sells uh, big bras. She sells big bras. Did you know oh, that? I didn't know that. Yeah, it's, it's that's I, important. I, yeah. Oh no, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. Because she she's got big boobs mm-hmm. and, and she, she needs big bras for them. Yeah, yeah. And, she, yeah. Uh, and they're expensive and they're hard to find. No, so she sells everyone's always like my right. back. It's yeah. called it's that's called Jeanette uh, Bras. Uh, and you guys. Why wouldn't want, it be? Sure, it's a good name. And do you guys want to know what the slogan is? What? Hmm. Alphabet starts at D. It's nice. <laughs> Jeanette. <laughs> Jeanette. It's just a nice joke. <laughs> it's just it's Jeanette just... 100 comedy points, Jeanette. <laughs> this was her first movie. She was a theater actress. Jeez, Louise. Um I, I, you really uh, got me going with uh, by picking Vasquez here. Um yeah. Oh, I love her. She's I love her too. She's great. Um I was just, I remember being stunned. She's also in yeah. Terminator 2. She as, plays John Connor's foster mom. As John Connor's foster mom. Which I think is much closer to who she is in real life. As, which is, and yeah. then in Titanic, she plays an Irish mama right. who reads to her kids and then like they die in the bed when the water goes away. I always them. forget that that's her. And that's also her. <laughs> like he would get her back and he, she would always be. Uh, you guys should listen to Matt Gorley's podcast. I was there too. He interviewed yes. her and she's very funny about all of it. And she's like, she would call her up and he'd be like, this time you're Puerto Rican. This time you're Irish. Like, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I listened to the, the Rico Ross episode of I Was There Too, where it's Frost. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Who talks about his Arturian Poontang. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's the, uh, he, he doesn't do a lot, Frost, but he's, he, the, he, that was a very funny podcast episode. It's a good he's episode. A cool guy. Yeah. I mean, he was there on set a lot. So yeah, he had a lot right. of good stories. Uh, I was there too. A great podcast. Good podcast. Uh, big fan. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I love Vasquez. I'm, I'm a little partial to Hudson. Hudson's, Hudson's obviously kind That's of like Paxton. an archetypal Griffin character. Very much so. He's very much in the wheelhouse of what I like at a movie character. <laughs> so Bill Paxton's in The Terminator. I assume you noticed him. Yeah. Yeah. When, cause if you just watch The Terminator. Mm-hmm. Uh, he hadn't been in anything, right? Or had he been in Near Dark? I th- I'm looking it up. Okay. Um, I love, I love Hudson. I love the arc of Hudson. He I love that been in Har- Hudson is like this, like. That his arc is a deconstruction of machismo. Absolutely. You know, it's that's like, what I love about him too. It's yeah. just bravado and then just immediately crumbles like, and then he becomes someone that I relate to. <laughs> yeah, well, very quickly too. Yeah. He, I guess he's like the type you imagine. It's sort of yeah. like the Vietnam like squatty who's just like, this is going to be great, right? We're going to like shoot our guns yeah. and blow yeah. up a bug bunch hunt. of bugs. Bug hunt. Right. Yeah. Doing a bug hunt? <laughs> me, me and my friends going on a bug hunt. Here's what I like about the movie. Uh, and this is the only thing I like about it and everything else I despise. No, sure. I, um, 
is yeah, bad that, movie. We all agree on this, right? Mm-hmm. Bad movie. Yeah. Is that like you don't know if there are aliens or not? Yeah. You know what I mean? They're all humans, yeah. and we seem to have we've scanned hundreds of worlds or something. Uh, and then Sigourney Weaver, they're like, why'd you blow up your fucking freighter? And by the way, they can't let it. It's like 90 years ago and they can't let her go for blowing up the freighter. Stupid. And, she, <laughs> stupid. and um, she's like, well, there was an alien on board. And they're like, oh, an alien. I don't know about that. Okay. But then when the Marines are being trained for like, we're going to drop on this planet, there might be an alien on, out there. They're like, oh, yeah, bug hunt, huh? Like, let's go kill some. So are there Rico aliens or not? about fucking an Arturian. <laughs> so what's going on? I don't know. <laughs> I just love that it's. It's like a casual, like, we don't, it, it's not trying too hard to, uh, is like, uh, ex- explain things to us. Yes, which I love. Yeah. Um, but, but he explains a lot of stuff. He, there's a lot of showing, not telling in this movie. They explain the things you need to know by showing you how they work, you know? Mm-hmm. God, this movie's the best. Uh, mm-hmm. but even just like the Hudson arc, like, the first half of the movie before he, like, comes face to face with the aliens his hair is all like spiked up mm-hmm. and it's all the fucking jokes and he's like making fun of Vasquez or whatever although he does freak out when Bishop does the knife trick on him yeah mm-hmm. which he doesn't is, like that we get the first little you know glimpse and of the crack in the armor and also Vasquez burns him pretty bad when she says that he's also never been mistaken for a man yeah, mm. yeah that was a pretty good burn yeah but that's good character build you see the little like ooh there's Griffin's a little there's like a little dent there his fingers there's a little right? dent it's there good. Yeah. it's my impression of Michael Shannon in the night before my favorite performance in 2015 mm-hmm. he does this weird thing with his two fingers and they have this weird sound effect. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> they uh, great performance. My favorite performance of Michael Shannon's was in 2016 when he was in that picture of him in a Hawaiian shirt and <laughs> jean shorts. He's he is going to get nominated for that, right? Oh yeah, he's yeah. he's a front runner for that picture. Michael Shannon thoughts. We're big for... Shannon fans on this. Oh, one. I love him. He's I mean he's a big Chicago. I mean he lives there. He's, he's a big he's Chicago. A, he's a big Chicago. He's, he's big one of the he's, biggest he's Chicago's. Like, <laughs> well, he's like one of our celebs that <laughs> we get to be like, oh, he's he's because he's our... local boy made good. He's, he's like a Steppenwolf guy. Was he in like a theater? He owns a theater. Oh, called shit. Red Orchid, I believe. He should have called it Big Chicago. He was like a Tracy Letts guy, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. that whole, yeah. And he's still. I Michael think... Shannon's Deep Dish Theater. <laughs> <laughs> what if it's a dinner theater? <laughs> I've been to Red Orchid. It very well yeah. maybe. Hey, I'm Michael Shannon. Come you get us been, spaghetti. So it could be. I haven't been. I think they do serious plays, but a nice big dinner. <laughs> hey, get us spaghetti um, and come plays, see Oklahoma. If you get the lasagna, <laughs> they give you another lasagna to take home. <laughs> like, yeah. In the, in the take home box. I just love the idea of it being. A musical <laughs> dinner theater review. He like would. It's like almost He's like he anything. would. Yeah. yeah. Um. But people see see him. He's like the person you're like. Oh, I saw Michael Shannon. Shannon um, around town. Talk about seeing him. He was the original Burger Report. He was the original Burger I Report. Yeah. Yep. I have um, seen him, but he was not eating. Have I you, mean, do you have a Burger Report for us? If you do, don't no, tell I. Us. No. Okay. No, it's fine if you don't. That's fine. But I don't. If you do, obviously. one time I saw Michael Shannon not eating a burger. That's pretty good. I think it's he was no burger report. Post exercise, he was in workout clothes. Uh, uh, so we know he exercised. So he was, he was buffing up yeah. for Zod or uh, yeah. something like that? For 99 Homes. He was jacked in that movie. <laughs> uh, Fran, I'll say this to you. We're new friends. And I think things are going off to We're a great start. We're two friends. We're two friends. But you guys are new friends. We, we are, are new friends. friends. <laughs> Hashtag it. Um, but uh, I'm not angry at you for not having a burger report, of course. I would never mm. be angry at you for that. Yeah. That haven't been said, Fran. I swear to God. <laughs> If you have a burger report and you're holding out on us, I'm going to be fucking <laughs> He's going to be furious. mad. He's going to be real I mad. I wanted to have one so bad. If that's you, fine. If you Fred, have an orange Fred, I have been, My eyes have been peeled for celebs that's in Chicago. Fine. We have two. That's fine. Wait, 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 who's the other? So you got big Chicago himself, oh, Michael Shannon. Oh, we got uh, Joan Cusack's around. Oh. oh love her. <laughs> Can love you imagine how great it would be to watch Joan eat a burger? Oh, Jeezy Joan. She must eat a burger so Je- well. I just said Jeezy Joni. <laughs> Jeezy Joni. <laughs> I love um, John Cusack. Uh, from now on, we have to call Michael Shannon Big Chicago anytime he comes <laughs> up on this podcast. <laughs> Big Chicago himself. Malkovich is a Chicago guy. Isn't he? I guess he doesn't is live he? there anymore, though. He he started out in Chicago. He lives he's, in like uh, the south of France now, right? He's he's, oh. he's doing well. I think he does. He's doing well. Oh, I wish we. His Reddit better. AMA. He answers in all caps, which I love. <laughs> And now I have to read that. <laughs> oh, it's it's very good, but it's also just like, man, you just made the choice to keep these on. <laughs> He's in a, a movie that I'm very excited to see, which is I'm calling it uh, Dirty People the movie. It's actually called Deepwater <laughs> Horizon. But uh, oh yeah, have you seen the posters for Deepwater Horizon? It's, no, I haven't. It's Wahlberg, Gina Rodriguez. I just knew that it was Wahlberg. Wahlberg, Gina Rodriguez. Who Kurt else? Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. And, Jane the Virgin. Uh, yeah, Gina Rodriguez mm-hmm. uh, and uh, John Malkovich. Right. The posters is just their dirty faces. They're just like, Ooh. Ugh. like they look <laughs> like they are really stressed out and yeah. they're covered in oil. It's like individual character posters and each one is just... <laughs> just a dirty old face. A dirty old face. <laughs> I'm gonna find... 
I had a high school friend who just like loved John Malkovich, and that was like his actor that he loved. But anytime John Malkovich was in a new movie, he'd be like, "Loves that he's getting work." And I was <laughs> like, "Yeah, he, it's not hard for him to get work." Dylan O'Brien oh, as wow. well. Uh, dirty, PewDiePie. Dirty face Dylan. Some dirty boys. Dirty face Jane. <laughs> oh, Jane. No. Oh, she's the she looks like she is about to cry. Yeah. yeah, like it looks like the poster photographer. I think something was bad like, happened. Fuck your in mother! That movie. Yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> right before he took the picture. <laughs> Big Chicago. But maybe the best one is Dirty Face John. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, he's good. He, he looks, looks great. He looks like he's like describing a meatball. Maybe like <laughs> he's sort of puckering his lips. Uh, <laughs> like he's describing a meatball. <laughs> I'm having fun with this. There's Kurt. Oh, wow. He's Kurt with a mustache. He's he got looks, a dirty mustache. He's got a dirty mustache. Uh, he looks pretty good. He, he doesn't look that different from 20 years ago. No. Yeah. Don't show me Wahlberg. There's got to be some surprise to this for me. Okay. It's a good call. I won't show you Wahlberg. Yeah. I'll give you, you a hint, though. He's dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Black and white, dirty. Yeah. Um. All right. So okay, let's talk about the motion picture Aliens from 1986. What's that now? Aliens. Aliens. Aliens, yeah. Aliens. So, uh, who's your favorite? Who's Ryan? my favorite? Oh, that's I think I think it's Apone. Mm-hmm. Bishop doesn't count, I assume, because he's my favorite. Not a Marine. Bishop, mm-hmm. right. Not, yeah. he, he. I just, I love him because I love that the movie is immediately like, to the audience, like, we we know you know about the robot trick. We know you saw Alien. We know about the robot. You know about the robot trick. We're not going to pull the robot trick. He's a robot. Like, yeah. we're going to mm-hmm. give it to you rough front. And I just, I love. And now it's about prejudice. It's about Ripley. It's about mm-hmm. prejudice, yeah. but but you get the prejudice. This isn't like a movie where you're like stirred by the plot no, of no, Bishop. No, no, no. I like the <laughs> idea. He's a robot. Who fucking well, cares? That's the, yeah. that's the thing. I He's like the idea himself. that the movie like has this sort of sub thread. Of him proving himself to Ripley. Yeah. And at the end, after he gets torn in two and he's like mm-hmm. done all, he's like crawled Spoilers, through shafts. Yeah, yeah. 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 And he's like, you know, covered in milk blood. <laughs> uh, Ripley's sort of like, you're right, Bishop. You know, like, <laughs> like he's finally made it. <laughs> yeah. You're not half bad. <laughs> and I love, he he just seems like when they're chatting early on in the movie and like uh, Paul Reiser, again, he's such a wonderful slime Oh, ball. he's so good. Oh, God, I love him. I love his dumb collar. He mm-hmm. has like a, clo- you know, like future clothes with a weird yeah. collar. Um, When he's like, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, uh, Ripley had a bad experience with the robot. And Bishop's just like, oh, no. Oh, I'm so sorry. What happened? Like, so understanding. Even though, like, he should just be like, well, we're not all the same, Ripley. Just because yeah. one robot busted your head open or whatever. Uh, um, I have long- Tried to cram a magazine into your mouth, <laughs> which he does. He and Holm does. I have long said. Yeah. Uh, Love Bishop. The thing I think He's is such a sweet pie. hardest to play mm. is a decent, uncomplicated person. G- good, right. As Which is actor. sort of what a robot should be, right? right? Yeah, 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 but when I see someone give a good performance as a decent, uncomplicated person, because there's nothing to like hold on to and like sink your teeth into, because it's hard to do that and not become like saintly, to actually mm-hmm. have like grounding and coloring as a person and sure. feel three-dimensional, but play someone who is uncomplicated, kind of selfless, and just, like, consider it is, like, really fucking difficult. Because actors are drawn towards, like, oh, the dark side and the struggle and what's their pain and, like, this and that. Um, That's, like, the thing that people like to dig into. And, like, Bishop is, like, such a perfect example of just, like, this very clean, like, efficient, honest, decent performance of someone who is, like, hated and understands why everyone hates him and doesn't fight it. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And it's just, like, I'm just going to keep on being good and hope if you one day want to start liking right. me, that's right. fine. It's like there's a fourth law of robotics where he can't even be mean to people. Like, he's not even allowed to be rude. He's such a good guy. Although he does, like, do the knife trick with Bill Paxton, even though Bill Paxton is like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. And you would think yeah, he'd be he's, like... he's trying to, like, blend in with the other guys. Right, and right. he's like, well, yeah. if they make fun of this guy, I should make fun of this guy. Yeah. He, we should say he's played by Lance Henriksen, the great who Lance. is so yeah. wonderful in The Terminator for, oh, for yeah. uh, 10 minutes. And in know. Piranha 2 The Spawning. He's and three he's for in three Piranha now. 2 The Spawning. Okay. He was Cameron's early muse. I think yeah. this is the last movie they make together. Is, is he not he, in the is he in the abyss? abyss? I haven't I seen remember. The abyss, I don't know. Well, you know what? We're gonna find out. When well, we next week, we'll find out. Uh, but um, he, I watching this, his face has like transformed between these three movies, mm-hmm. where he's got these really deep lines. He's got mm-hmm. quite a face. Yeah, and he's got a beautiful face, but he has these like two deep lines right under his eyes. Mm-hmm. These like very bizarre, yeah, specific yeah. wrinkles, and then he's got these like you know sort of like hollowed like cheekbones. And then these big, like, soulful eyes. And his hair's got this weird flip to it. And then he's wearing, like, this onesie, like, this green point jumper, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's just, like, he's got such a bizarre look in this film. He does. 
because and his hair is a little you know he's got sort of odd hair that's what I was saying. Yeah, he's yeah, got yeah, this yeah, weird yeah. flip he's yeah. almost got the like Nicolas Cage Bangkok Dangerous right, thing he's going got on. the Nicolas Cage receding hairline but without yeah. the central piece that they then attached to Nicolas Cage's head in so many movies but the, but the hair is an interesting yes. look for a robot it is that's an interesting what I was look for a robot right. because usually in the media the idea is that the robot looks perfect yeah. like they create mm-hmm. a perfect sp- well, human or what specimen. I love about well like Fassbender and yes. Prometheus but what I love about Ian Holm in Alien is that Ian Holm literally looks especially in that movie like a smaller cube on a bigger cube like he's a very <laughs> like cuboid a man yeah. he's not even fat he's just like yeah. a bit like a lego yeah mm-hmm. and when he's an alien you're like oh yeah right i, I should have seen that come of course he's an alien. of course he's got marbles for guts but lance <sighs> henriksen is like i mean like he, marble guts yeah oh it's the the marble guts are it's, it's something so good yeah he's got this like very worn face but it's also very symmetrical in how worn it is so it looks designed even though it's not designed to be like <laughs> immaculate, sure. you know, it's no, like this know, very interesting you. balance. Um, and he, and he is. There's something very soulful about him, mm-hmm. and especially in a film where immediately everyone's like, "Fuck you, Bishop!" Right? Mm-hmm. Fuck you, Bishop! Yeah, Ripley, who is not nice to anybody, like, she's kind of nice to Paul Reiser. Like, I guess she's sort of grudging towards him. Yeah, she's mean to everyone else. She's really mean to Bishop. Yeah, I mean, I guess the movie is trying to not just be like, "We know you know the robot twist." I suppose it is. Maybe planting a seed, like, oh, maybe the robot will be bad again. But you know yeah. he's not going to be bad. Yeah. Um. I also love, uh, what's his name? Uh, fuck, uh, Gorman. Yeah. Played by William Hope. I have to yeah. look at, Um, who is the you know the commanding officer mm-hmm. who, who who's blows like it. only done like two missions. He's he's only done like simulated landings or whatever. Mm-hmm. I, I, two, including this oh, one. Oh yeah, two, he, including yeah. this one. He's got such a great thousand yard stare of horror like when he yeah. realizes things are going wrong and I I I just he's well ca- I don't know that guy is he in other movies like I've never really I don't, I don't know. know him yeah um, he's great and but then Apone's my favorite I mean we've gotten through ha 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 page 12 we've gotten through most of the main <laughs> characters now, so we should talk about the other two big ones we should talk about Hicks and Hicks. Newt Hicks is a cutie yeah, I mean, Hicks, Hicks is a cutie. Mikey Bean, also in the terms. Yeah. With a real sense of, like, calm and centeredness he didn't have ter- in Terminator, you know? In this I like film, him so much more in this. I oh, do, yeah. too. He's yeah. so chill in this. It's, He's so yeah, yeah, yeah. happy to, uh, I just said, as an actor and as a character, yeah. cede the floor to Sigourney, like, to, to Sigur Rooney. Well, that's the beautiful mm-hmm. thing about this movie for me is that, like, He's just, he's you know. just yeah. helping out. But it's always cited as sort of this like cornerstone of feminist genre cinema. And the thing that I think is so beautiful about it is the men in the film who are heroic are the men who listen to the women. Mm-hmm. Like Bishop and Hicks prove themselves True. to be like worthy allies right. because they go like, you should listen to her. You seem yeah. to know what you're talking about. Right. Right. It's not just like the other guys are like, it's fine. We're bug hunt. What's yeah. the problem? We're they don't go in there and, right. they and kill the bugs. They never try to take charge, you know? Like They're like, they're not aliens. There's no aliens, right. and right. you're not a marine, <laughs> right. so you're just here. Well, everyone else, yeah, is, you yes. must not be here for any reason at all. I shouldn't yeah. listen to you. <laughs> everyone else is doubting her, and yeah. you feel like even anyone who believed her in even a world, yes, she, she was like that planet's bad, and they're like it's fine. Oh, what's this? Oh, it seems like there's a problem <laughs> with that planet. Wait, it's so quick between when she goes, <laughs> it's bad there, and then yeah. they're like, oh, it is bad there. <laughs> yeah. No, it's totally. It's what's, five my phone's minutes. buzzing. <laughs> That's the one difference, like the one major storytelling difference between the theatrical and the directors Uh is the directors cuts out the sequence with Newt and her family on the base. So we never see it operating. You mean the theatrical cuts that out? The theatrical cuts that out. Right. You said the director. Sorry. sorry, sorry. The theatrical cuts that out. Right. right. So we never see the base until they land. So we just hear the. No, there's terraformers there. Yeah. Anyway. It's going bad. We got to go. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't. It's all all going fine. Uh, I just heard it's going bad. You don't get the same sense that, like, things turned while she was there because you don't see it. Like, it doesn't register in the same way. Whereas in the director's cut, which I love, she's like, you should get people out of there. And they're like, go shut the fuck up. <laughs> and then they're like, okay, we need to send you there to get people out. No, they, they tell her that. And then yeah. she goes to like that room where they like project a park bench. Like, right. So you know, weird. she yeah. sits there. And then they're like, they oh, tell her about her your... dead daughter. They tell her about her dead daughter. And they say she died aged like 60 something. And they show her a picture of Sigourney Weaver aged to look like 190 years old. Like <laughs> the oldest looking Sigourney Weaver possible. Yeah. I don't well, know. Am- Amazon trivia. X-ray. Ooh. Fran uses X-ray. She confessed this to me. It's a great, a great I platform. I like X-ray. I love it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> great company. <laughs> um, they, that's a picture of Sigourney Weaver's mother? Is it? Oh. That's what they said. Yeah. <gasps> so I'm wrong. They had an age. You're right. A 119-year-old. Uh, congrats to her. Yeah. Wow. Real. Who is Sigourney's mother? 
Mm. Sigourney's father was the president. Jesus, sorry yeah. for asking, friend. I just told you she's in the picture. Uh, Sigourney's father was the president of NBC. I know. Uh, okay, her da- her mother was Elizabeth Inglis, an actress, and the her dad was indeed an NBC TV executive, Sylvester Weaver. Good Sylvester name. Weaver. Cool. She was born Susan Weaver. Uh, she was born Susan Weaver, and, and she, she uses the name nice. Sigourney after a minor character in The Great Gatsby, Sigourney Howard. Cool. That that is cool. I don't know who that minor character is. That must be like very minor. Must be, but she There's must only like six characters in that book. It's really <laughs> only four. Yeah, I mean the baby, I guess. <laughs> um, no, I the billboard know. is a character. Too. Oh yeah, and that oh, fucking light. Oh, the eyes. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if I'm betraying trust here, but I'm going to share this just because it's too fucking cool not to share. Uh, I, I worked on uh, Political Animals, which was... With SW? Yes. A, uh, well, I, I say no, political no drama. No scenes with her. I was in very, very separate plot You had a bunch of scenes with Mozzarella! Carla Gugino. Yep. Yeah, I played her assistant on the show. Yeah, Big Buffalo Mozzarella Carla. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but on the call sheet... Did you listen to the episode in which I compared Carla Gugino to a very nice mozzarella? I think so. It's the yeah. Roadies yeah. podcast. Yeah. You should listen. Oh to yeah, 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 yeah! I did, but it feels yeah. like an unfamiliar joke to me. At this he point. he won an Obi yeah. for that. Comment. I won an Obi for that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was good. Thank you. Um, on the call sheet, which is like the sheet they give out every day that says like which scenes are being shot, which actors are in People it. People know what a call sheet. Is. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Were you number one on the call sheet or two? I was not. I was number seventy-five. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, what's my name? Fucking. I keep on thinking it's Rick, but it's not. That's the other one. Rick the intern. Weren't you called Rick on political? Russ the assistant. Well. I was <laughs> Russ the assistant. They were very similar. It was Rick the intern and Russ the assistant. Okay. That was my whole niche. You're on political animals. Go on. Sigourney Weaver, SW, obviously number one in the call sheet. They did not put her real name on the call sheet. Really? So was it I, like an obvious pseudonym? Or was well, it... you want to hear what her fucking badass pseudonym was? Go ahead. And I don't know if I'm putting her on blast here, but I, I want to believe that maybe she switches it up. But okay. at the time, it was like the coolest fucking thing. Her pseudonym on the uh, on the call sheet was Diana Prince, <gasps> which is Wonder, Wonder Woman's, Woman's secret, secret identity. identity. Mm. And it was like, yeah, yeah, we already draw that connection. <laughs> she would have been a good... Yes. Yeah. Wonder Woman back yes, in the she day. Would have. Yes, she would have. Yes. Really uh, I just thought that was so cool. The Scorny Boo was like, yeah, yeah, just uh, call me uh, Wonder Woman. She's the coolest. She's a god. Uh, yeah, she's opinions so cool. on S. Let she's, me, let me give great. you some. She's uh, a goddess walking among us mere mortals. So Sigourney, yeah. Sig- Sigur Rooney. Sigur Rooney Weaver. Sig- Sigur Ross Sigurella. Rooney Weaver. Um, had only been in, only been in. It's true. <laughs> great. Sigur Ross Weaver. No, I get you. Yeah. Um, she had been in Annie Hall. Alan Ripley. She's his date. Alan Ripley. Then she's an alien, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Then she makes a bunch of great movies. You're living dangerously. Boom. Ghostbusters. Oh, pretty good. That's about it. Then a couple other not that good movies. But then she's in Aliens. Yeah. So she's still pretty. All right. So she's still pretty new. Like, I mean, she's a star or whatever, but she hasn't made like. Working Girl or Gorillas in the Mist, like her like other Oscar-y movies. You could argue that she was a star, but she wasn't an icon yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She had yet to transcend to like movie star, like she's, legendary movie star icon. She's great in Ghostbusters. Yeah, she is. That's I mean, that's when I throw out like how boss Sigourney Weaver's career is. Is like the one movie where she took the thankless like love interest role was Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like that was the one where she was like, Yeah, I'm just gonna like play the like the the crush. In, like, a boys game movie. Mm-hmm. And it was Ghostbusters. Say it like that again. Ghostbusters. I wish, wish I Ghostbusters. Asked. How do we get on this? Musical <laughs> guest, Ghostbusters 2. Oh, bad <laughs> musical guest. Skip it. Just fast forward on the DVR. <laughs> and your host, the real Ghostbusters. <laughs> All right, that's enough. All right. What were we talking about? What were we talking about, Fram? Well, Sig, I mean, she's the best. She's great in oh, this Hicks. movie. Hicks. We were talking about Hicks. Oh, Hicks. He's he listens to her. He's a hunk because he listens to her. He's a quiet hunk, which is the best kind of hunk. He's quiet. He's chill. He fucking knows when to hold back. He knows when to fucking give stage. They flirt. They flirt. But, you know. But in like a nice, non-threatening way. Exactly. A couple grown-ups. And yeah. Especially when, I like it when he's like, when she's like, come on, you started this. Teach me how to use the gun. Like, that's yeah. a good mm-hmm. flirting scene. Yeah. yeah. Where he's not coming on very strong. And she's just like, it's okay. We can, we can flirt Aliens for a second. Is a better movie because there's flirting? Yeah. Yeah. I think it. Well, I think that Yafit Kato some... and Harry Dean Stanton get some real flirting done in Alien. So oh, I mean, you know, that's you know true. don't forget about that. I mean, that's true. Uh, Yafit Kato is real sad when Harry Dean Stanton bites the dust in Alien. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing I like about uh, Hicks is some good flirting though. Mm-hmm. I judge a movie by 
if the flirting is Alien, good. Alien 3 has a little flirting. I've never seen Alien oh, f- oh, 3. Charlie Dance and... Uh, That's my favorite aspect of Alien 3. I Sigourney think their Weaver? relationship is you know, really well... She goes on the dance with him. She they, goes on the Charlie dance. dance. Yeah, yeah. No, she goes I've on never the Charlie seen it. Dance. That's Fincher, right? It's Fincher. It's not good. The as- I like it. The quote- I defend I, I, it. I, I sort of defend it, too. The quote-unquote assembly cut, which is like, uh, it's on the DVD, and yeah. it's not officially his cut, but it's something that he sort of expressed. Like, he has been like, I will literally never look at Aliens three, Alien 3 again. Oh, it, wow. like, ruined me. Yeah. But they made a better cut of it, like, that I think was That's a lot of the stuff That's closer to his first wanted. assembly before mm-hmm. they came in. And that is a pretty interesting movie. Alien 3 on its own, like, the sort of theatrical cut is, is, is tough to take. It's a fucking weird movie, though. That's all, most of what I've heard about is just very weird. It's very abrasive, and it's dark, and it's just set in this, like, absolutely grim location that is visually interesting, but also really just grim and oppressive. I went, I guess because I knew we were going to talk about this, I went down like sort of deep hole of alien stuff in the last couple of weeks on the internet and I was reading a lot of stuff on the mm-hmm. internet. Yeah. And I was reading a lot of stuff about like the whole evolution of the whole Aliens franchise and the idea one of the first writers who came in on Alien 3 had was like, because the original director was, I forget who it was, it was a New Zealand guy. Yeah, it was uh, Vincent Ward. Yes, yes it was. Um, the they were Vincent like, Ward, who I also studied in my New Zealand cinema oh, class, uh, which took I to took, flirt. which I took to flirt with a girl whose name I would really like to tell you guys because it's the most insane name in the world, but it feels weird to say her name. Diana Prince. <laughs> Can you bleep it out, Ben? Sure. Okay. <laughs> that was her name. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know. They're laughing because oh her God. name is, is the name of, it a, of a TV character. <laughs> anyway, I had a huge crush on her, but please bleep that out. Uh, that, that is the most on-brand crush you could possibly have, David. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Anyway, yeah. The guy who later made What Dreams May Come yes. was originally going to make Alien 3. So this interesting idea that, that he expressed in this interview I read was that like uh, the aliens, the first, all four alien films are directed by non-Americans. True, yeah. Ridley's a, a Brit. Brit. I mean, uh, Canuck. James is a Canuck. Sure. He's a Canuck. He's a Canuck through and through. I mean, I, yes. shouldn't, I shouldn't, you know, And then, well, And then Vincent Ward was going Western, to do the third one, Fincher's was a New Zealander. A, American came in and the fourth film's a Frenchman. It's directed by Frog. And that movie is... A catastrophe. A fucking bizarre. <laughs> yeah, I can't watch it. Um, but uh, the, it, it was going to be... Have you seen Aliens Re- Alien Resurrection? No, no, no. I've seen... No, I've just seen Alien, Aliens, and Prometheus. Yeah, I like Prometheus. I'm a huge Prometheus defender. I haven't seen it since it came out, but I think it's interesting. I think yeah. it's very interesting. I don't know if I like liked it, but yeah. there's yeah. a lot of cool kind of stuff going on. Yeah, I, yeah. Mean, I think we've talked yeah. about this, certainly off, maybe on mic, but it, it's a good movie if you lose the Alien stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. A, I'm a little Prometheus defender. I'm like 5'6", yeah. 125. Yeah, sure. Right. I'm, and I'm about 6'3", right. you know, 210. We're both Prometheus <laughs> defenders. <laughs> <laughs> I'm five eight. I should just say that on the podcast. Are you five eight? No. Okay. But that's sort of the you thing say I say that. on Twitter a lot. See here, because five eight. Because no one knows. I walked in. You were <laughs> already true. sitting down. Yeah. I'm, when I oh, showed up to um, the studio. Then yeah, I'm five eight. It could, it could be a real power move. Where you're like, I'm five eight, Griffin. I just yeah. realized, like from sitting, I felt like we're like of equivalent sizes. But I realized you could have stood up and suddenly <laughs> been substantially taller than me. Oh, yeah. No, I'm just 5'8". <laughs> okay, I'm yeah. a modest 5'8". You're a little bit taller than me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm actually 6'3". Wink, wink. Yeah. Wink, wink. Um, wink, wink. Wink, wink. Wink, wink. For the listeners at home, I'm also actually winking while I make this sound. I'm blinking. Yeah, wink, you're wink. really just blinking. Wink, wink. All right, now you're... Wink. All right. Mm. Alien 3, did you actually have anything to say about Alien 3? Oh, yeah. So Vincent Ward... <laughs> he wanted to make some movie about, like, a wooden planet. Yes, he, he did. He what? wrote a treatment that is the most insane thing in the yes. world, where he's like, they land on a wooden planet, and everyone's like, oh, yeah, sure, keep going, keep going. No, no, is there a dollar sign? Like His interpretation, <laughs> where's the dollar sign? Can, There's yeah. no ass in wooden planet. Get the dollar turn sign out of the three. That's what I was going to say. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Or make, make it looks like a three, but then you zoom in, and it's a bunch of little dollar signs. Making. <laughs> that would be weird. <laughs> he's like, come closer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. They, of course, saved that tagline for American Beauty. Uh, look, closer. look closer. Fuck. God. <laughs> fuck. 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 Negative 15. Uh, American Beauty points. Um, 
like the worst kind of point. <laughs> this is the punchiest episode we've done in like in a, a little a while. Real, yeah. It's the punchiest since the visit, I would say. The visit yeah. is our punchiest episode ever. Yeah, and that was of a two a day. We were that was a back to backer. Was it a back to backer? That was a back to backer. That was a back to backer. It's just a little hot in <laughs> here. You know, it's getting cool in New York, so yeah. the AC is not working as well, and you yeah, know, it's a little hot in here. Sorry about that, Fran. Uh, I feel fine. Great. The the point I was gonna make was that I read this Vince Award interview, and he said that the idea was when they came to him, and he was like, "Yeah, sure, I do an Alien 3. He was like this kind of new filmmaker, visually inventive, and fitting Absolutely. in with sure fitting in with the people they would hire who would be newish directors, get people on the ascent, yeah. right? And he said, like his interpretation was the Aliens films were about America, right? You know, they were sort of these like original sins of the foundation of our country. Right. So films. Alien One is this very industrial movie, right? And it's sort of about like capitalism and right. corporatization, corporatization and that sort of stuff. And Aliens Two is about like war, and it's, it's called Aliens, about, not called Aliens Two. Aliens, <laughs> yeah. Is about like war and it's about sexism, but it's, it's about also gender. about yes. capitalism. You know, right. I mean, her best line is, uh, "I don't know who's worse. Uh, you don't see them fucking each over, fucking each over, each other over for a goddamn percentage," which is a great line because she says it so casually. But it, like when you hear it, you're like, "Oh my god, that's like a that's a very clever little line." Yeah, yeah. Anyway, carry on. Uh, Aliens three. His idea was that it was going to be about religion. Yeah. Big and that crazy. was, like, the last thing we sort of had to tackle within the alien universe to be able to cover this, like, mm. full thing. And I like the idea that the film's almost— going to be a weird religious colony on a wooden planet. Right, exactly. And then they decide to make planet it made of wood. a sex mm. offender's prison instead of the last second. Correct. Although there is still a wooden—I mean, <laughs> there's no wooden. Uh, yeah. There is still a religious element to They're alien monks. In the they're monks. Right, yeah. But they are all sex offenders who were sent to a sex offender planet. Oh, wow. And they're all men. She's the only woman. It's a weird— I like it. It's a weird movie. It's mm -hmm. not as bad as that sounds. Yeah. I, would, I felt more so on Wooden Planet. Yeah, Wooden like, Planet. I haven't seen that before. Wooden Planet was a good idea. I mean, the worst thing about Alien 3 is that she crash lands and Charles Dance wakes her up and she's like, what happens she to Newt? She crash landed on that planet? Yeah. And oh she's God. like, what happens to Newt and uh, what happened to Newt and Hicks? And he's like, oh, yeah, they died. And Bishop. And she's like, what do you mean they died? And he's like, I don't know. They're dead. Okay. So <laughs> I, and you're like, what? <laughs> that sucks because it's you're so clear at the end of right. Alien who is still alive, which is just her and Jonesy. Yeah, exactly, which yeah. is great. And in, mm -hmm. in, in Alien, she she literally to Jonesy is like, uh, you got to stay here because I don't think you're going to enjoy this movie. Like, you know, but <laughs> yeah. like you're fine. And yeah, you're, but and safely the, written out. Right, exactly. See, I kind of like it. I know that's everyone's sticking point with Alien 3. I kind of like it because I kind of like that the Alien films are like anthology films with one character. I don't that they have like a... span this time and these locations and that each one has to be sort of like, a yeah, reset? but that's just a pattern that gets set by Alien 3 making that decision. It's not really necessary. You could bring them back. At yeah. least Bishop. He does Bishop come does back, come in, back Alien in Alien 3. 3. It's Bishop like his, is weird, returning. his weird head. She has to, like, reconstruct Bishop. It's really and then, cool. Oh, yeah. It, it it's is, cool. There's some cool shit in Alien but 3. But you couldn't bring back Newt because she would be a lot older. That was one of the many reasons. And also yeah. the actress never appeared in another movie mm -hmm. again and didn't want to be in movies. She's a school oh. teacher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She goes to school. conventions. Yeah. Oh, we should talk about Newt. Let's get back to Aliens. And I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. The only reason the Chappie alien film should happen. Al alien colon Chappie. Right. Which alien is what colon it will be Chappie. Called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In which case they would Chappie have alien. Yeah. an older. Chappies. An older. <laughs> Chappies. What's the S? <laughs> it's a dollar sign. <laughs> it's a shit emoji. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> the only reason Chappie should direct a new alien film is so that Juno <laughs> Temple could play in it. Yeah, J Juno Temple would be a good new. What do you think of this idea? She looks oh, like Newt. Oh, yeah. Right? And oh, they have I a like similar that. And energy. She's great. She's, she's great. great. She's Who doesn't love actress? Juno? Yeah. Hmm? Who doesn't love Juno? Yeah. Everyone loves Juno. Yeah. And she's overdue for like a badass uh, yeah. Ripley type character. Yeah, I think that's she hasn't true. gotten to play something like that yet. And I think she's very capable of it. That's the only reason I would want that film to exist. I will continue fan casting that I'm, until I'm the day cool I die. I'm cool with an Alien 5. I just don't think I want Chappie to make it. I don't know who I want to make it, but Chappie just doesn't excite me. His name's Neil Blomkamp or whatever his name is. I don't like him. What do you think of him? I haven't seen any. You haven't even seen I all haven't seen, Disney 9? I never saw Disney 9. Yeah, I've Disney never, Nine. I, because I, what trailer? I mean, the Free Fire trailer came out, and mm -hmm. that's uh, his boy Shoto is yeah. in that. And, I've, and I was and like. And it's apparently good according to some people and bad according to other people. Yeah. yeah that seems I, to be a recurring thing with Wheatley films. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Love or hate him, yeah. But I was like, oh, what have I seen Shoto in? And then it was like, oh, also nothing. Right, so I'm right. really just not even. So you, you, you weren't a Maleficent? Fan? I was going to make the same yeah, joke. Hey, you probably know, were going to do it better. Hey, you guys are talking about Chappie. Yeah. You know, I just thought of this. Um, 
one of the hen, one of the guys, the uh, the Marines and, and aliens, uh-huh. he looks like one of the members from Die Antwood. That's also in Chavi. <laughs> I think it's like a Drake. I, yeah, I know who you're doing. The yeah. one that Vasquez kind of likes. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. They got a similar vibe, similar Played look. By Mark Rolston. He's cool. He gets burned with acid. Mm-hmm. Uh, so here's my pitch: uh, Alien Five, mm-hmm. directed by Jennifer Ken of the Babadook. Sure. Hmm. I mean, she's one of those people where I'm like, I'm excited to see her next movie. Like, yeah, you know, I don't know, and I don't know what she'll do. Hollywood's been trying to lure they her almost, away. They almost picked her for Captain Marvel, and she keeps yeah. on being like, I want control, I want to do what I want. Yeah. I think that is a franchise that she would fit in well to that Maybe. that would match with the sort of themes and her skill yeah. and her sort of craft and everything. Fucking Alien Five, Jennifer Kent, Juno Temple, Sigourney Weaver, give it to me. Um. Newt. What do you think of Newt, Fran? Newt's the best. Played by Carrie Henn. <laughs> Newt's, Newt's fine. Yeah, I, I think I agree oh, with that. I, I find Newt pretty great, pretty great love, sometimes. She's a little great. And it's Newt. the maybe just like kind of like hint of British accent that really like is jarring for me. Mm-hmm. Which is especially weird because she was American. Yeah. Yeah, she's got a funny voice. Which I like love. Like her funny way of, uh, funny diction. Yeah. Newt's a little. Her little voice. <laughs> Just really. I mean, I don't even like South Park, but South Park ruined. They mostly come out at night, mostly for me. Like uh, that, that it, it, I can't not laugh when she says it now. Newt's my favorite. I knew I Newt's a real Griffin adore Newt. Too. It's a real Griffin character. I like. Yeah. I like. Yeah. Newt. She's she's a good, a pretty good version of a usually very difficult to like character. I yes. guess. Yeah. 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 Right? yeah. I'll get. Yeah. I'll give it that. Yeah. I mean, like the helpless little girl. Except she's not totally helpless. But but she's she, like pretty capable. Well, Pretty capable. Sometimes she, she like falls on a vent. No, she I'm just like fucking vent. Watch out for the vent. <laughs> yeah. But I love. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's like she's been that way before because it's her leading them right through and the air got... system, and then she just falls through the vent. It's like <sighs> it does a million times. Okay, but here's <laughs> a thing I like about Newt. Okay, so Newt just is. She's a little girl from the mining colony, the only survivor, only survivor, and she's been like living on. One cool thing about aliens is that it takes into account the fact that it's going to take them a while to get there. Yeah. And so it's like they get a distress call where someone's like, eh, something's up at the colony. And they're like, all right, well, let's get on the ship. And then when they arrive at the colony, everyone is dead. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, but Newt's still there and she's a cute girl. And obviously Ripley forms a mother-daughter bond with her. Which is great. Obviously, like, Newt That's activates the, the most of Newt. resonant part. But I think yeah. Newt as a character works on her own. And the thing I like about Newt is obviously there's the thing where early on Hudson's like, we're fucked, man. There's no option. And she's like, that girl has survived sure. without any weapons or any training. Right. And then they yeah. cut to Newt, and she's just wearing the oversized helmet, and she does the salute. <laughs> um, yeah, it's and I great. think that moment encapsulates everything I like about Newt, which is that, like, she's a survivor without them ever trying to make her into some sort of, like, accidental badass, right? Yeah. They don't make her into some, like, oh, and then she fucking became, like, Newt. You know? Like, she's <laughs> just some girl who has, like, happened to survive through resilience. Yeah. But she also keeps her, like, childlike nature the entire film. Yeah. And there are a lot of scenes where, like, okay, so she her falling through the shaft is, like, annoying. She's at times surprisingly helpless considering her sort of general, like, character type. But I know what you mean. There's a scene where they're sort of debriefing and they cut in, and this is also only in the director's cut, they cut in her yawning. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, that touch is great. I love this scene. I like the where... way she's like, where they're like, what's up with your parents? And she's like, oh. And they're like, yeah. oh, what? And she's like, well, they're dead, okay. And yeah. like, I, I, she's, 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 she's got she's, a really interesting true. balance of like, you know, this sort of like trauma, like victim, you know, someone who's had to witness like everyone they've ever known die and every night hide out and vents away from aliens. And she's like got this very interesting balance between like hyper awareness and sort of avoidance. But the scene where, like, uh, she's talking to Ripley and Ripley's trying to put her to bed and is, like, you know, saying, like, am I going to have bad dreams? And she's like, no. And it's like, well, look, in your, or, she carries around the doll head. All she's got is the disembodied head of the doll. Sure. Mm-hmm. And she looks into the head of the doll and she goes, look, see, no bad dreams in there. And she goes, yeah, but she's not real. She's just made of plastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Ripley laughs at it. And it's like, yeah, you're a fucking smart kid. Yeah, Ripley's mm-hmm. like, oh, I get it. You I know what's up. I can't just use, do my usual bullshit. You've had to see you. a bunch of death. <laughs> she did that to Bill Paxton. And he was like, oh, you're right. No bad dreams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I love Newt. Uh, they made a Newt action figure, uh, and they only sold it at Comic Con. And I like p- fucking like, I kept on like pestering the tech people to be like, "Does it look like we're going? Does it look like I'm getting a badge?" Because I was like, "If I don't fucking go to Comic Con, I will go eBay." But Griffin's a money. weirdo who likes toys. I like fucking. I have a shelf toys. of aliens, yeah, yeah. and I want to have Newt you want on a there. Little Newt. I was missing amongst my menagerie of alien characters. Newt. Uh, I like that dropship pilot who's like. Got the aviators, and she's like in the pipe, five by five. Pharaoh? Oh yeah, she's cool. She is cool. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a bummer that she dies. 
Yeah, yeah but that's that little scene, scene is so funny. It is so fun. because she's so mad at her co-pilot for like not showing up because he was being devoured by an alien. He sucks. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, didn't I tell you to? And then it's great when she grabs her. Like she, she makes a go of it. Like yeah. she doesn't just die like a loser. She grabs her gun. Mm-hmm. And can we note the guy, her co-pilot, who dies mm-hmm. just because he has one of the best last names in the history of cinema is Spunkmeyer. Mm. And this is his last mm-hmm. name. Yeah. And um, she keeps saying it, too. When Spunkmeyer. The, yeah. The the final, uh, like, skeleton crew of this movie is six people. Yeah. It's and, it's Ripley, Hicks, Burke, uh, Bishop. Oh, I guess uh, seven. I, it's, I, Burke dies midway. Right, right. But, it, I mean, the hero crew that we're left with is... Ripley, uh, Hicks, Burke. I keep saying Burke. Ripley, Hicks, Bishop. Yeah. Hudson, uh, Newt, and Gorman? Oh, oh, no. And, and Vasquez. Oh yeah, yeah Vasquez Gorman. and yeah. Gorman. It's well, they died people. together. They died together. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's seven great, people. great little yeah. scene. It's great still, scene. I mean, okay. Really like that scene. I forgot that it was that it was more. Well, than say that. people. Like. I was gonna say it's like fifty <laughs> fifty, but the fact that there are like three females within like a group of like oh, sure. eight survivors, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. that they are always presented throughout the film as being the most competent. Yeah, well, we mm-hmm. we you talked know? about it on our Terminator pod. Uh, Cameron has this like like. Fe- he almost fetishizes like motherhood and yeah. and like mothers as this. He seems to like revere them as this sort of warrior type. It, it can be a little patronizing in both, but it works largely, especially in like the eighties when you're not getting a lot of female characters like right. in general. But like, this in these one, kinds I think, also has a bit of a variety to it. I mm. mean, you look at like Vasquez, Ripley, and Newt represent like three pretty different types of women, mm-hmm. you know. And all of them are, like, strong and tough and, like, badass. But, mm-hmm. like, in Newt, it's in the form of, like, a little girl who still carries around a doll head, you know? Mm-hmm. In, like, Vasquez, it's obviously much more of a, like, you know, sort of, it's like, of pop a, like, art poster kind of yeah, way. Yeah. 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 Uh, what do you think, Fran? I love that no, I agree with that. I think, I mean, I was talking, I'm going to talk about my mom more. Please I do. mean, Please my mom do. loves this movie. And, lo- and she was just also, remember seeing it in theaters and the fact that they're even just, like, were female Marines that are like in this movie Absolutely. and treated with like the same level of respect, especially Vasquez. Um, mm-hmm. Even just the background ones, like even when they're yeah. like at the base and stuff, you'll just see like a lot of background women. Sure. Like he yeah. integrates them more into the military than mm-hmm. most films do. Yeah. yeah. And it feels very normalized and it's like yes. not a thing that's. Apart it's from not that like... offhand joke, which gets shut down right away, which feels like yeah. a sort of hint that it's like we're not yeah. gonna take that this kind isn't of what this seriously is about. Yeah. and that joke also has less to do with the fact that Vasquez is a woman in the military and more that Vasquez is the most terrifying person in history mm-hmm. you know like it's yeah. a joke about her gender mm-hmm. but it's specific to like the form she's that scary. her gender takes she's, yeah. Yeah. She's, she's, she's a tough girl I love yeah. her. but no go on about your mom oh just uh, th- that was most of it just mm-hmm. uh, that there were women in the military and that's just it's not a thing and the whole thing about women in Alien is that they're just like not listened to Ripley is never true. listened to, and that's like the thing about women in it that is like both like commendable and interesting and feels realistic to it. It does. Is that yeah. it's like this Her, might be bad, and everyone's like, we just don't know if how bad it might oh, be. I mean, that got me so annoyed where it's like you have somebody telling you that aliens jump onto your face <laughs> and lay eggs inside of you, and you're like, ah, oh, fuck you. Like, that's insane. No one covered their mouth when they went in there. Come on. But once again, like Hicks is. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Hicks is what? like. Don't make fun of me. <laughs> no, I'm not making fun of you. <laughs> I see you on the camera, David. <laughs> Hicks is like the most conventional sort of like gunslinger type in the film. Sure. And his power comes from much like Mad Max Fury Road that he knows like, Just oh, deferring. I'm not the hero of the story. Right. And the best thing I can do is use my power as a man to listen to what she's saying and get other people to hear it. Mm-hmm. There's that great moment where she says like, I think we should go into orbit and then like nuke the shit out of this whole place, right? Mm-hmm. And then Burke is like, what, what are you talking about? We can't, we can't do oh, that. I so don't, much money. This and that. And then he, she goes like, well, Corporal Hicks. I also love bonuses. when she says that, that uh, Hudson's like, yeah, nuke the play. Like, yeah, sounds dude, great. Just fucking nuke it. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, Burke is like, no, no, no. And she's like, well, you know, now that Apone is dead, Corporal Hicks has now taken command. This is a military operation. Hicks, he goes, yo, Hicks, I mean, he can't take care of this. What? He's a grunt. No offense, Hicks. Riser's so good. So good. We can still get Riser next. Oh, my God. I texted mm. both of you a picture of Paul Riser's name in the credits, <laughs> and you didn't reply to me, and I was very offended. I was both- on a plane. Yeah, all right. I was too busy jerking off after you sent me that picture. <laughs> the mere name. Terrible. Both of you terrible. No, uh, Riser's great. <laughs> Mine? <laughs> all right. Yeah, I think I'm more terrible than Fran. Fran was just on a plane. I was just first class. First coming. class with, first uh, class with Ansel. 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 Yeah. So um, Paul Riser's been well, in. No, the moment I was going to say was, I'm sorry. He, like, no offense. And then, like, Hicks, you know, she goes, like, Hicks, what do you think? And he just repeats the exact same thing she said. And then was sort of mm-hmm. a knowing wink where it's like, I got you. Mm. I'm going to use my privilege 
to your advantage. Paul Reiser's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he had been in Diner. Yeah. And then they were going to make diners with a... <laughs> <laughs> they open up a second diner next then, door. <laughs> he's in Beverly Hills Cop, which I don't... I've been, Barely. I haven't seen that so since I was a kid. So the opening of Beverly Hills Cop when he's in Detroit before he goes to Beverly Hills oh. to investigate. Paul Reiser's one of the guys in the office who's like, Foley, what the fuck are you talking about? Oh, sure. Yeah, good, he's, good in a, he's in it for one good scene. Good. Sounds like he does, does a great job. He's great in Diner. He won an Oscar for that, yeah. He won two Oscars, Diner, and then... And then Beverly Hills B- Cop. B-H... C1. C. Whew, yeah. That was tough for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Alien. So, he's pretty new. He hasn't done Mad About You yet. And he's like third build in this, I think. Sounds right. I think it's Weaver, Bean, and then Riser. Uh, My Two Dads yeah, is going to come next year. Okay. That's his other sitcom. You guys don't remember. He was on a sitcom called My Two Dads. Don't tell me what I do and don't remember. <laughs> and then, of course, there's uh, Mad About You. No, his great novel, Fatherhood, or yeah. whatever it's called. What was it? And then Husbandhood. He wrote like like five of them, right? He wrote the, all the hoods, um, and then the Paul Reiser show, obviously. Yeah, which I mean, never forget. Which uh, do you know? The, do you remember the Paul Reiser show? No. It was basically like it was like five years ago, maybe four years yeah. ago. It was like Wait, N- really? an NBC version of Curb Your Enthusiasm, starring Paul Reiser what? as himself. Yep. It, and Andy, I was for sure alive. Um, you were for sure alive. I believe it aired one episode on broadcast I think they television, aired two. maybe two. I think they gave it to big promotional push. It was him. It was Amy Lanneker, I think, was his wife. Amy Lanneker. Oh. Andy Daly's in that shit. Um, what's his name? Um, why Omid Jalili. Omid Jalili is in um, that. The guy, uh, he, uh, he was a Daily Show correspondent. Uh, why am I forgetting his name? And I he went on no to About idea. a Boy. No idea what you're talking oh. about. I'm going to figure out. Ben Shankman from uh, Angels in America was in it. Anyway, so. Paul Reiser makes me think of Acid Wash Jeans. <laughs> <laughs> and like a t shirt tucked in. That was his fourth book, was Acid Wash Hood. <laughs> um, they, they aired like two episodes and then they're like, oh, I'm sorry, this was a mistake. Anyway, so that's Paul Reiser. I'm Reiser's. going purely off trust on this. Yeah, I, we can't might... be- I can't believe I don't. That cast this that I so... named is pretty weird for, for, for it to actually have happened. I might have just been free associating names. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, Ben Shankman, <laughs> uh, 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 Andy Daly. <laughs> no, um, it was real. And uh, my boss, former boss Todd Vanderwerf, once sent me a screener of it that he got to his house. He like paid for postage to send it to my house <laughs> and told me he sent me a present. And it was the Paul Reiser show. Oh, that's nice. It was nice. Uh, so that's his number one achievement. Number two, aliens. He's great. Mm-hmm. He's, He's so a good. Real oh, fucker. Easy. Yeah, I love the way he dies. Oh, it's so good. He's sort of tricked in the same way he's tried to trick uh, Ripley, and uh, so he's he's the representative Wayland Yutani, right, of the evil organization. Yes. What are you doing? I'm trying to look this up, but now I feel like maybe I was wrong about. Yeah, there's no Daily Show guy in it. Now I'm wondering if this is like a Bernstein Bears. Thing because I could have sw- I watched one episode. Well, whatever. This is unimportant. <laughs> Very Al Madrigal is the guy I was thinking of, and sure, I could have sworn he was on it. I maybe enjoy I'm him. I think we're thinking of another show. I think so. Yeah. Um. So he so he represents whatever the corporate overlords that are sort of hinted at in Alien, and but it is, like Cameron yeah. decides to flesh mm-hmm. out here. It is They're a, really just called the company in Alien. A yeah. gorgeous performance. It's so good. Oh, well, is. I remember the first time I saw Aliens, which maybe was high school. Sure. I was very. I was curious if they were going to redeem him in some way because he plays it a little sort of like creepy but neutral. But in the way that like robot, the robots are sort of like, okay, now I was like, maybe the company could be a turn better now. And it's fun to watch that line be played for maybe like the first hour of it. Right. After a while, you're like, oh, "Oh, yeah. I mean, it's around when she's like, let's nuke the place. He's like, well, there's a substantial dollar value. I mean, both of us can come out of this being heroes. You're looking like heroes. Eventually, obviously, Mm -hmm. we realize like his job is. Get some alien eggs. Yeah, into a. He just lied. He straight up lied he's on a, the video on the video screen when she's like, "We're gonna screen. go kill him, right?" And he's him. like, "Yeah." And yeah, he also the thing. she calls like, him yeah. just to say, "Yeah, yeah." Uh, after having one of those horrible nightmares, and that is a horrible nightmare sequence when she mm-hmm. imagines that she's got an alien inside her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, he he. She calls him just to say, "We're gonna kill him all, right?" And he's like, "Absolutely." Yeah. Gives a real bedroom eyes over that. He lied about everything. Screen. Yeah. Yeah. He even it's lied just about a straight up lie. He lied about being shirtless. <laughs> it was he was really wearing he a shirt? He was wearing a t-shirt a sh- that looked like a, a chest. That fucking, <gasps> that the, fucking wow, the, 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 Nuanced. The, um, the, what, what century is it sent in? They've got some great shirts in that century. I think it's in the 1800s. Um, the thing I was going to say is the beauty of this performance to me sure. is that he doesn't play the villainy. Mm-hmm. Like he knows oh, the yeah, things right. that will be revealed about the character will make you hate him anyway. Yeah. 
and he could do one of two things, the two obvious things you could do in this role, which is, like, be way too slick mm -hmm. and telegraph it from the beginning that, like, this guy's a snake oil salesman. No, he's playing it like a guy who thinks he's doing the right thing. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. or, or the other option is be way too squirrely and look too nervous in sure. what you're saying so it's no. clear this guy's lying. He's mm -hmm. a fucking, he's like an ad exec. He's, he thinks this is a good idea. Which yeah. makes him more villainous because it's not like he, it's the bottom. he, he thinks he's in the right. It, yeah. He thinks he's the hero of the you movie. You have yeah. to understand yeah. how a company would be like, I know every time these aliens get out, it's a real <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> yeah. But they're really good. Yeah. And we'd really love to have one. Yeah. So if you could just get one to put on Ripley's face, maybe. She's a real pain in the ass. Yeah. Just get her in a room with an alien. You know, we'll figure out the rest. You know, like. The idea that that decision could be rationalized is You would is listen to this guy in a boardroom. He's like, yeah. he's pretty convincing. He's got a real sort of like stoic kind of focus mm -hmm. to him, you and know? And he's like sort of defending her in that boardroom yeah. meeting in the beginning. Because I think he genuinely also believes that like what happened on that shit happened. And then he wants one of these aliens for himself. Yeah. Oh, God, he's so good. Um, um, he is. I feel like I mean we're not we're not doing plot in this episode, but it also is because the plot is just survival. I mean, this well, is yeah, survival. Yeah, but it movie, is a, you know? it is the classic Vietnam type movie where it's like they're all gung ho. Yeah, they get mm -hmm. to the thing, they meet new. You know, the the thing seem the, the 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 terraforming colony seems weird. Like there's weird holes in the floor and like acid burns and. Mm -hmm. And then they get attacked by a bunch of aliens and like half of them die. Like the sort of characters we yeah. haven't really mentioned just get like sucked into the air by aliens. It's yeah. such a cool sequence. They go into like the hive where they, they go right into the hive. It's all They've, sticky. Like, yeah. Real sticky. Mm -hmm. They're not supposed to like shoot their guns because they could like blow up the whole planet by mistake, but they are, you know, they've got flamethrowers. Have... It's a disaster. Like, I love the <laughs> idea. They've all got these great guns, and well, immediately it... it's like they're all useless. Don't use any of yeah, them. Yeah, because they can't shoot anything because like the colony could blow up just from like how it's built, but also the aliens are full of acid. Full so acid. there's like two different things they can't shoot. It's... Flamethrowers are cool. The flamethrowers are very cool. I do love every time an alien pops. Uh, yeah. Like, you see one pop underneath the wheel of their car thing. Maybe that's when. Oh, this might be my the goof that I. Oh, what's I was, your goof? Um, you were going to reveal a goof I on your Amazon reveal... X-ray. <laughs> I feel so lame. How much I love this. Well, I hate goofs usually, but one of the Amazon goofs I, I think hate for goofs this... too because I want my films to be you know seamless and well made, yeah, right. yeah. Um, flawless. But I think it's when they're they drive over the alien and it bursts that they're like you can see a whole egg yolk come out and you definitely can't and I saw it and I laughed so hard <laughs> at is... the whole egg yolk coming out of this like it's a good bursting plastic. yeah. All the goopy stuff in this is so good. Yeah, this is a great goop movie. I love the milk. It's a blood. real goopy. The milk blood obviously I mean, I is wonderful. Yeah. And it's like arguably grosser than a lot of like real blood things. That's the thing. Milk is gross. Oh, the yeah. grossest. It's my Milk's number one least gross. favorite. Liquid. I love milk, but I know it's gross. I mean, I I'm okay on milk. I feel like I'm in the middle of the milk conversation that just broke out here. But uh, <laughs> it's um, your least favorite thing. Yeah, it's my least favorite. Liquid. What are you looking up? I'll save it for later. It's a segment. Great. Don't worry about it. Whole segment. I can't wait. <laughs> Um, but it is pretty gross. Like, we all agree, like, sort of to think about. That's mm -hmm. why I think I probably like the Alien films so much, because they have a similar uh, view on milk to me. They align politically. Yeah. With yeah. Actually, it's sort of an uncanny valley sort of type of moment, wouldn't you say? Yes. Yes, I would, Ben. Thank you, you so much. Our finest film critic. Appreciate it. I'll just jump in whenever. <laughs> <laughs> um, the aliens pop. They shoot blood everywhere. I, acid, I like that the acid happens more than once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not just... Like, I wouldn't remember they have acid, but like anytime they shoot an alien, they are at least partially scarred by acid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's good. Love that scene. And then it's basically just the the sort of core eight that we talked about right. that you thought were six, but turned Ooh, out it was eight. Question about the acid. Shoot. Now, does the acid ever stop melting? Because it seems like it could go right through the armor, then onto your skin. Yeah, so yeah. what happens, Ben, is it burns sure. uh, through uh, all the way until it eventually goes down through right, right. the layers of yeah, the earth. That's what I was thinking. goes through mm -hmm. the center and sure. then comes out the other side. Right, so you can and, drop a pencil. And then yes. it drips into space. Yes. Yeah. Whoa. Well, China yeah. first, because China, of course, is on the other side of the world. And if you dig mm -hmm. a hole, you get to China. Okay. In, in England, if you dig a hole, you get to Australia. Oh, is that it's like yeah, it's like the stereotype. That nice. Same That's thing. Cool. It's like it, there's like you, whenever a cartoon character like comes out of a hole on the other side in England, there's a kangaroo because they're in Australia. That's cool. That's nice. Uh, anyway, um, whatever the hell just happened happened. Uh, you guys talked about acid. I can't remember what I was talking about. Uh, the core group of the eight. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. then they hunker down and they have to like try and survive because they they're because the dropship is coming. It's it basically great. becomes yeah. like a survive the night kind of. Yeah. Yes. Because I love that scene where they're like dropship's coming. Great news, and we just see it sort of this great model. Yeah. It's a good model. <laughs> just sort of go. Eh. 
I can't, I can't like <laughs> and, like through some clouds. Yeah, and through here, drawings of clouds, like yeah. elegance of James Great Cameron, drawings. right? Mm-hmm. Okay, this movie was like a much bigger budget than Terminator, but it still is like by our relative standards. You know, like film budgets hadn't become astronomical yet. Yeah, uh, what is the budget on this one? Let me look it up. 40? Eighteen million dollars. Jeez, that's pretty crazy. That's actually that's crazy. insane. That's crazy. Because even present day, that would that's only like 40, be forty, maybe. No, I think it'd be like sixty or seventy, which would still be incredibly low mm-hmm. for a film of this scope. I don't think it would be that high. I think it would. Mm-hmm. Because I think the film made like eighty, and in modern film day, film made dollars. eighty-five, which is two hundred in modern day. Thank so you. it's well, so, so it's I a little more than double, but like, not much. I think twenty would be like sixty. No, that's that's twice double. That's not. That's I'm not gonna it. look that's... up a film that made twenty million dollars that year. Have fun with that. Okay. And then adjust for inflation. What I was going to say, I have no Wi-Fi. What I was going to <laughs> say was... I'm going to find one. Psycho 3 made $14 million. Well, too low. I won't settle for that. Which counts as 33, so extrapolate. I'm looking for 20 on the nugget, <laughs> and we'll settle for nothing less. Anyway, it was Some a pretty... Kind of math podcast? Yeah, this is yeah. a math podcast. Yeah. Uh, it's a math podcast where we can only do math <laughs> if we relate it through films right. that came out in a certain year. That's why we keep our checks blank, because we're still trying to do the math. It takes us forever. <laughs> um, so um, it gave him a moderate budget. I think the Terminator cost, what, like six or seven million? I think it cost less than like, that. Yeah, not much. I think it cost like three or four. Because there's the story that he wanted to blow up a car in Terminator and there wasn't room in the budget. And he was like, well, guess I'm losing my car. <laughs> like, he blew up his own car. You know? They, like, stretch that to, like, the limits. Ooh, Sigourney Weaver was paid a million dollars, which was a lot of money for the day and was 30 times more than she made for Alien. Do yeah. that math. And, hey, a bargain. A bargain at twice the price. And she was nominated for an Oscar. We should which is, that. okay, One so. It was her first Oscar nomination. Watch all the Alien films. <laughs> loved them. Got the quadrilogy for Christmas, right? That Christmas, I went on vacation to Australia on the other side of your homeland at the time. Mm -hmm. One of my best friends from middle school had moved to Australia, and I was like, I'm going to go on a trip to Australia. And I went to Australia and stayed with his family for like a couple weeks, right? Sure. And I brought the Alien Quadrilogy set with me, and he hadn't seen any of them. We watched them all together, and then we watched all the like special features. Yeah. Uh, which is a great way to spend time in Australia is just watching DVD (laughs) special features. Hey, man, you did what you did. I'll do the the same thing. Yeah. Uh, It's $333,333. Thirty-three. Cents. I think you, you might, I think you may have multiplied. What, what did you do? What oh, there's I no way have, it's that. Oh, wait, yeah. Saying a number, you know? Jeez, no, I fucked it up. All right, <laughs> I'll, I'll get back to you. Keep all of that. Yeah, carry on. Um, so I, I at that point in time, like I had been charting modern Oscars from the moment I started watching, uh-huh. but I had like never really like studied the past nominations. We're watching this documentary about like the making mm-hmm. of Aliens, and they go like, you know, the film was a huge box of, box office success. Played really well with audiences, and then it got good reviews. But we weren't expecting Oscar nominations. We thought we'd get the sound and the like, whatever. Sure, right. And then they said, like, you hear Gail Ann Hurd's voice say, "But we were stunned when Sigourney got nominated for Best Actress." And over that Gail Ann Hurd pull quote, right, that sound bite, they just cut to Ripley in the power loader, and my friend and I, in unison turned to each other and went whoa <laughs> like our minds were blown we were like wait they gave her a fucking oscar nomination for that this is a real specific memory you have yeah here. i think about this all the time and we just turned to each other and went that's the coolest thing i've cool. ever mm-hmm. heard especially when you see her in Which the power motor <laughs> over that fact but the idea that it's like this is so the kind of performance that never gets recognized mm-hmm. no it's true yeah and Which especially she for her 1986 mm-hmm. yeah is that Out of Africa wins Best no, Picture? No. What wins Best Picture that year? Platoon. Best had act- lots of women in it. Geraldine Page, Trip to the Bountiful? No, it's Marley Matlin. Oh. Old Jennifer Lesser God. Old, young, old Marley the Matlin. The youngest Best Actor? The youngest actress? winner ever. Yeah. Yeah. It's 33000 What are you talking? What? what <laughs> that was your salary for Alien. He figured yeah, it out. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I, I thought I just... he was trying to adjust the Alien's budget for inflation, and somehow he got smaller with the number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, aliens cost thirty three grand in today's money. <laughs> all right, um, all right, we well, it's, we it's, gotta wrap your. It's I'm the type sorry. of nomination that never happens. We haven't even talked about the Alien Queen, and I'm realizing that's what we're yeah, getting yeah, to yeah, next. Yeah, yeah. But for that to be the first Oscar nomination in her career, yep. to be for a film like this, that's not the type it's of thing great. that ever gets recognized, and also it's a very understated performance. Mm-hmm. It really is. It's a yeah. quiet, you know, sort of like small focused, resilient, yeah, woman. She's, she's arguably it's a showier performance in. The first alien, because no then question. she's kind of like panicking, and she's, now she's mad, just, yeah. and then she's freaked out. Yeah, it's true. Mm-hmm. And in this, she has obviously she has the get away from her, you bitch. Like she has a couple big 
mm-hmm. moments, but she's very understated. She's figuring stuff out. Because yeah, she she is sort of observing. Like I it's she shouldn't go. No. To the, like, <laughs> that's the only thing about aliens that you like she had a terrible time uh with the with the alien last time. Well, really a bad And she like a, just woke yeah. up. And she just woke up. But that was probably like the worst weekend of her life was the first movie. Right? It was up there. Yeah. It was way up and there. they're like, okay, well, you know that planet you went to with the eggs? Remember yeah. that? And she's like, I do. Yeah. And they're like, well, something bad's happening. <laughs> She, do you want to come? And she, of course, in the movie, she's like, no, I don't want to go. Yeah, like, right. And then she calls Paul Reiser, as we talked about. He well, first she's like, t-shirt. when you say something oh. bad, do you mean like embezzlement? And they're like, no, it's the alien <laughs> shit again. It's that alien shit. No, that um, alien shit you hate. And they say to her, like, well, you'll get reinstated as like a warrant officer or whatever. And it's like, she should be like, yeah, no. Yeah. Like, just can I go to Earth? I'm like- fucking Ripley. <laughs> Uh, so she shouldn't do it. But I yeah. love that once she's on the ship, she is very like quiet and observant and... Like, doesn't really show her deck of cards, like, yeah. until shit starts to go down. And then she's like, everyone needs to listen to me because the same thing is happening that happened last time. When I saw I the Ripley. film at, I love Ripley, uh, my biggest, like, life goal is to she have a daughter her... and name her Ripley. I've told you this before, right? I don't know. And my mom has said, what if your wife doesn't want to name your daughter Ripley? And my response is, she wouldn't be my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Very cute. Girl. Things would not get that far. Because I have priorities. Mm-hmm. Um, what I was going to say was when I saw the film at Town Hall and, and Sig- Sigourney spoke afterwards, there was a woman sitting next to my sister and I who was very intense the whole film, right? There was this woman sitting by herself who was very intense. My sister was even like, that woman's intense. And she got up and she asked the first question. She said, hey, I served. I did three tours. You were sure. always an inspiration to me. That's cool. Watching the films as a young girl. And then now that I've gotten back and had to reacclimate, I watch the films and I see that uh, Ripley, especially in this film, is one of the best portrayals of PTSD I've yeah, ever very, seen in a movie. Very traumatized, yeah. Yeah. Especially that scene in the uh, colony where they find the woman who's been oh, uh, wrapped up and her, yeah. her chest starts to, like, you know, yeah, get an alien coming mm-hmm. out of it. That's, that's how it's you awful. describe that, right? Very yeah, awful. Yes. And the way she's she's on watching on video, like, she's not even there, and the way she reacts to it is 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 quite quite good. The thing I find beautiful about this performance is she is playing a uh, you know, a someone suffering from PTSD, but she is playing someone who is not defined by that, mm-hmm. which is a very unshowy way of doing that. Like she doesn't have her sort of big breakdown scenes. Yeah. There are very small cracks and it is someone who just is like trying to keep moving forward. Yeah. Um and on a sort of Ben technology technology type tangent, mm. when you mentioned the screens, a big thought I had watching the movie this time is like HD video has really ruined a, like a, a certain kind of tension in like genre films like mm. this because there's a beautiful language to like having film and it's like fucking 35 millimeter and it looks rich and then you cut to someone look at so something on grainy, a monitor yeah. and it's like grainy and now like the monitor looks the same <laughs> as the movie because both things are shot on like high def video sure. mm. I love like the fucking video call yeah, video's great. I love mm-hmm. when they're watching the security foot like all that shit is like unnerving when they're way zoomed in yeah. on like a pixelated screen mm-hmm. yeah let's talk about the queen what do you think of the queen frame? Ugh. She's gross. Ugh. Yeah. They really hone in on how fucking gross bugs are. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's a movie about bugs. And, it is. Uh, big they're gross. bug. She's awful. Oh, God. That's she is like awful. A scary, She's not nice. big, yeah. <laughs> like, gross thing that kind of, like, hearing them scuttle in this is, like... Yeah. It's when there's more than one of them, right, it's right, really right. just oh, the sound editing and mixing of this it, oh, is amazing. When it yeah, removes itself from the like exact oh, yeah, 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 oh yeah. my mm-hmm. god, that is so disturbing. And gross. Uh, he, that's the only thing Cameron designed. Obviously, he retained the they like tweaked him a little bit, but the aliens basically look the same. Yeah, um, but he designed the queen himself. He's a weirdo, that guy. Uh, yeah. Jimmy yeah. C. He's, now, he's do, gross. Do you think that the head in the mouth has any say in decision making? <laughs> You're questioning whether the head in the mouth has a, he- a mind of its own? Yeah. It's like the little guy working inside the brain. Yeah, like in Men in Black. Like a yeah. guado. Is that what it is? Qua- quato. 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 We always <laughs> Thinking of quato. Thanks. <laughs> I've never met someone who references quato more. <laughs> and says his name wrong. wrong every time. <laughs> <laughs> um, guys, I gotta pee. You keep talking. Okay. Oh, wow. This is... A first. It's a first. I really got a pee, though. That's why wow. I feel like wow. I got a while ago. Uh, an... Should we do a pee, pee break? A pee... No, I feel like we should talk yeah, about something. Yeah, we should something... just talk okay. about... Okay. Fran, what's someone we can talk about now that David is in? Oh, that's, that's just great. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Like, um... like, what do you think of David's shirt? It's okay. He told me he was wearing a different shirt. 
earlier today? Yeah, when we were like in a meetup, he's like, I'm wearing this shirt, but it's a different shirt. That's a weird thing to say. Wait, so when you met up with him, he was wearing a different shirt or he told you that he had he was just like, changed? I was like, look for me. I look like this. Um, and he was like, I look like I'm wearing this shirt. But then it was it was this shirt. Interesting. So he, he self corrected by a text, but it was like a it was like a weird practical joke. So you know, I'm I'm like wow. a lone girl in New York City. Yeah, I just got here. You're like Ripley stranded on planet LV four two one, and I'm yeah. like being lied to by a friendly person. Right. God, I'm so glad I asked this question. <laughs> I know I was going to be opening up here. Okay, so let's describe it to the listeners at home. It's like a very nondescript <laughs> navy blue polo. Stripes? No stripes. Solid. Are you sure? And I don't. I think it's solid. And <laughs> you both have been sitting in the room with him for like almost Why, two hours. I feel hours. like it's stripes. This is a test to how attentive we are. Okay, wow. but they're blue stripes. Hey guys, wait, what's going on, guys? Tell me. The striping is so light. <laughs> oh, I've been looking at this whole time. It's wow. the striping is. Griffin thought you had a solid colored shirt. The striping is thin it's and very light. Thin. It's very thin and it's very light. It's my favorite thing about boys is they struggle with color. Interesting. Like I men do... are more colorblind than. Yeah, well, sure. Men, isn't that actually scientifically true? Like yeah. more men are colorblind than women. Well, I don't see color, but <sighs> politically. I'm good with color. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've just That's gotten nice really into purple. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, I've been wearing purple a lot. Dark, light, Both. lilac, lavender? I, I don't know. I can't go too light, but yeah, purple. I think you could. I think you could. Really? Yeah, I don't know. Talking if... like, uh, <laughs> like grape soda light? What? Or no. <laughs> What's like a real light purple? Like a lilac. A light or like a, oh, yeah, that's a, a good example. Move. Yeah, I guess grape soda. Mo- I was mauve? Mauve. Mauve. I say mauve. Yeah. Mauve. Mauve. It's British. Um, Maybe British. British thing? Fuchsia. Ben, I, yeah, I don't know if I'm putting you on blast here, but you recently confided to me <gasps> that you've been sort of mulling over a alien to alien style lateral move into the world of fashion. Oh, sort of, yeah. You, I like wait, fashion. You, want, you think Ben's going to be a fashionista? Ben told me that he's thinking more in terms of fashion these days. Like he's like kind of interested in in stepping into the fashion world. I am actually. So if anybody out there wants to like you know book me for a shoot uh, oh. or get my opinion, I can consult on trends in fashion. Do this, you have a favorite trend right now? Yeah, I actually I really like uh, the sweatshirt. Or just sweater in general, kind of oversized, boxy kind of cut mm-hmm. that has a similar sort of tone, uh, but extra long T-shirt underneath. That kind of layering, I oh, feel like, like, is that. really hot. It sounds it's really bad. cool. <laughs> sounds uh, like Shrek. <laughs> how dare you, sir? <laughs> Don't kill Ben's dreams. <laughs> Sorry. I told Ben last week, I invited him to a fashion week party, and he was like, oh, man, that's a bummer, because, you know, that's like yeah, that's what, what I'm trying like, to get right? into He sounds like days. Brendan Fraser in Encino, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Ben, ben is is valiantly trying to step forward into the world of fashion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, hey, I've been reading GQ. Oh, yeah. That yeah. stands for Gentleman's Quarterly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it comes out every month. I know. It's yeah. fucked up. But, uh, hey, they should call it GM. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's already a thing. It's called that. Oh, yeah. The, the, <laughs> the cars. Peop- yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. the people who run uh, sports teams. <laughs> the business side. Oh, yeah. General managers. They don't own that in- those initials, no, but they do. the they company do, ben. sort of does. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right. What's going on? <laughs> Guys, we're just going to, off on a tangent. I had to pee and, you know, the box. We haven't even played the box office game. And you have some segment lined up that's going to be a nightmare, yeah, I'm sure. So yeah. I love this movie. I think it's a masterpiece. Should they kill the alien Alien Queen. Queen's great. I like the bug mapping thing because that's a new element. They don't really do the bug mapping thing on this. Early on, they have Hudson tease it out. I just like they always they set up everything in this movie mm-hmm. slowly and mm-hmm. diligently. But he goes like, "What if there's like one? Oh, yeah, Hudson's like, oh, the, the one who's come like, from like, like ants, and they're like they're bigger than ants." Hudson, and he's yeah. like, mm, but you know they have a queen. <laughs> but I love that too. Is they like have Hudson spew this like there must be a queen just shooting them out, and there's like thousands of them, and like you have him deliver that at hour like one minute fifteen. So you're like, "Well, Hudson's the fucking idiot. Of course he's right. wrong about this." And then like, boom, baby, Hudson was right. Big old. Well- Queen butt. It's interesting that they've like presumably done bug hunts before because they were just like Duh, another bug hunt, and right. then they wouldn't yeah. have had alien like bug aliens that also have a queen. Like that's a pretty standard sort of bug community form. Well, yes, Fran, it's true. Yes, Fran. Yes, they have like, done I mean, bug hunts right. before. You know, it is Fran. implied in the body of the film, but in what, the what words you... of Switch, not like this. Not like this. <laughs> not like this. <laughs> Switch would have been good. Switch would have been great in this. Apoc would have been great. Lieutenant Apoc. Yeah, Apoc mm-hmm. and Apon. Exactly. I'm pitching at the CBS this fall. That's great. (laughs) Bring them back. Those two guys. Box office game. Oh, you want me to play the box office game? 
Brandon, Aliens you 10 out of 10 masterpiece. I don't think I'm going to do well. But... Well, the movie came out July 18th, 1986. I had been born on April 24th, 1986. Congrats. Humble yeah, you know, the Mets are on the way to their last World Series victory, but Ugh. it's still, still ongoing. Um, Not my podcast. Aliens, op- <laughs> Aliens <laughs> opens number one at the box office with $10 million. Which at the time was a blockbuster opening. Quite weekend. a big mm-hmm. opening. Uh, $10 million on, on what? Like 1,200 screens? 1,400 screens. I mean, that would have been huge at the time. Very big at the time. It, end, it ends up with 85 domestic. If something makes 10 million opening weekend now, worldwide. it's a disaster. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, no, totally. Uh, yeah. So it okay. opens, yeah, it opens great. And uh, it's the number one film of the weekend. And do you want to guess number two? It's a sequel. Number two is a sequel. I believe the last scene takes place on a helicopter. I believe. It's a great clue for me. It's so useful. The last scene. The reason I think of that is because the, I think the last film scene, film scene of this film takes place on a helicopter, and then the first scene of the next film, because there is a third part, uh, is a little later, and the actor has gotten considerably older and heavier. In but it's it like switches right to the like the next moment in time. It's not a Rambo picture, is it? It's not a Rambo. But is it it's going to be franchise? hard for you to guess this? Yeah, it was a huge hit. It was based on it was a sequel to one of the biggest hits of the decade. It's a it's a weird one. It's a it's a weird one. Give me the genre. Uh inspirational kids movie? Problem child? <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Uh god, how do I how do I sum up this movie? Helicopter, one of the main actors has gotten heavier between two and three. It's the inspirational. First kids movie got an Oscar nomination for supporting actor. Oh, 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 oh. Karate Kid Part Two. That's right. The Karate Kid Part Two. Karate Kids. No. They didn't do that. <laughs> No I dollar laughed. sign. <laughs> number th- number three is comedy play. number three is a Thanks, great guys. entry in the one of the greatest trends of eighties Hollywood cinema, which is that Danny DeVito was a movie star. Ruthless people. Yes. <laughs> Remember when Danny DeVito was a like top build movie like star, like a leading for man. a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They'd be like, yeah, we should have another movie where Danny DeVito is the star of the film. Yeah, yeah. Dan- right. You know Danny DeVito? Yeah. He'll be the star. The greatest he's encapsulation. <laughs> <laughs> He's from films. <laughs> the greatest encapsulation of white male privilege. <laughs> I mean, you know, look, come on, leave daddy alone. Oh, look, an immense talent. But I'm just saying, not a conventional matinee idol in any way. Uh, and another non-conventional matinee idol is at number four in a Ooh. comedy film. A comedy film. Starring an older comedian who was very popular in the 80s. He was, well, it has to be Rodney. It was Rodney. And was it back to school? It was back to school. I'm giving you big hints, but they're good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're not gonna guess fucking Back to School otherwise. Rodney, uh, how do you feel about Back to School, friend? Do you have an opinion on The Karate Kid Part Two, Ruthless People, or Back to School? I've never seen any of these. <laughs> I don't. I'm I've, 19 years old. Uh, yeah, that's true, and you are a five eight. Five eight, 19. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and um, press about yeah. two forty. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I have seen Karate Kid Two. I have not. I'm I have seen not. Seen, I have never seen the first one. I've seen the first one. Have you seen the Swank one? I have not seen the next Karate Kid. That's no. the fourth, That's right? the fourth. But Karate Kid 3 is where Ralph Macchio is like deep into his various substance addictions uh-huh. and just oh, does yeah. not look good. Rob, yeah. From the uh, from the Rob Lowe roast. Yeah, they really lit into him in that Rob yeah. Lowe oh, roast. Oh, right. Yeah, it's Ralph Macchio from the Rob Lowe <laughs> You know, the great comedian Ralph Macchio. He yeah. did a great job roasting at the roast. <laughs> did you see his set at the Trump rally? That was unbelievable. His new 10 is so good. He's got this tight 10. Macchio... Titan. Yeah, he's got a chunk on immigrants. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Number five is a is hugely successful film about men who love each other. About men who love each other. They love each other so much, but a, they don't know how to tell each other. It's a buddy picture? There's some buddies. There's some rivalries. You know, some good times. There's a lot of abs. Oh, Top, Top Gun. Gun. Top Gun. Oh. I was going to say City oh. Slickers. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of abs in City Slickers. Yeah, that's what I decided. Not a lot of Billy Chime Crystal's in. abs in that one. Watch it again. Bruno Kirby's ripped in that movie. <laughs> How do you guys feel Bruno about Top Gun? I uh, like Terminator. I've only seen it like bits and pieces on TV. Okay. Seems fun. I like movies where men are nice to each other. Yeah, they're nice. I mean, they're a little mean, but they, they love each other. Yeah. Uh, like Titanic, I saw the 3D re-release and liked it. There was a 3D re-release? It's actually really well done. Oh. Oh, my, oh, my. <laughs> Uh, I had a long conversation with Fran about ER earlier, okay. and uh, mm-hmm. so we did talk about Anthony Edwards, although oh, Tony we didn't Edwards? say him by name. Tony. Uh, Dr. Green and mm-hmm. Goose. Tony, Tony Edwards. About Last Night is in the top ten. 
Oh. You got mm. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, yeah. That was a big one. Big like, Chicago. Yeah. Uh, big yeah, Big Chicago. I'd say Michael Shannon's Big Chicago, <laughs> Ferris is Little Chicago. You've got a film by a director who you've worked with, Ivan Reitman, called Legal Eagles uh-huh. with Robert Redford. Yeah. Uh, you got Running Scared. You got something called Club Paradise. That's a Ramus Harold picture. Ramus picture. Yeah, with don't with, know it. Uh, Robin Williams and Peter O'Toole. That's like the forgotten Ramus. So Ramus had two films in the top ten. He directed Back to School. No, he didn't. Yeah, he did. He directed Back to I. Oh, think no, he only wrote it. Thank you. I'm not sure who directed it actually. He was credited at the top of Box Office Mojo, but they don't they don't yeah. do their homework. That was Kislovsky directed Back to School. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> boy. What a wild weekend. That's a wild weekend. Alan like, Metter. Yeah. Nice things to pick from. Yeah, it's a fun weekend, right? And the mm-hmm. box office. This is why I like the game. I feel like oh, I love, the, I love this game. I wish it was like... The whole the podcast? La- oh, no. I was just saying, if this is in the past 10 years, I would like do a better job yeah. of it. But, but it's feel, tough. I'm so young. What, yes, you're just 19 years 19 old. Years old. I wasn't born until I was half. Yeah. 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 Fran's been aging down while we've been recording <laughs> this episode. Fran's um, been Benjamin buttoning pretty hard. <laughs> film won two Oscars. Sound effects, editing, and visual effects. Uh-huh. And Good. was nominated for editing, score, direct, art direction. Uh, best fucking actress. And best actress mm-hmm. and best sound. To which Jack Teague and I went, whoa! <laughs> whoa! She was also nominated. Sigourney was also nominated for a Golden Globe. And, uh, yep, she didn't win. Uh, the film won the Hugo Award for Best Dramatic Presentation. Did it not win an honorary Oscar for coolest fucking movie of all it time? It did, you know. They did, they gave it that, right? Either, that was yeah. the Thalberg that year, was. <laughs> um, yeah, David Lean presented it. Yeah. It was It was a good time. Uh, <laughs> aliens. So now Cameron's the big king shit. He's king shit. Now he has a blank check, yeah. I would say. And he's like, I want to make an underwater romance movie. I I'm guess. going mm-hmm. deep. Yeah. I wanna, Under I, the sea. Because I, I feel like The Abyss is the... <laughs> that was his pitch for The Abyss was he just... <laughs> he just sang, sang Under the, the Sea. sea. <laughs> A movie that had not come out yet. <laughs> but he went to Alan Menken. What's your awful bit that you want to do? It's not awful. First of all, it's not awful. <laughs> Great. Second thing David, I want to say give is... give him a chance. I'm sorry. You. The Reddit, The Redditors are going to be real mad at me. <laughs> well, they're already angry because I ate the bagel. Um, the first thing I want to say is, famously, uh, they filmed this uh, picture in, in England. In the United Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Pine and Wood. everybody at Pinewood Studios, which where I have visited. Oh, I mm-hmm. know where he's going with this. Everybody in Britain, uh, sorry, on the crew, was like, fuck this guy. We yes. love Ridley Scott. Like, who's this, <laughs> like, nobody child, like, coming in to direct this movie? And Cameron, you know, is known for he's not really having... He's a bit really of a bossy having, pants. He's a bossy pants. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he inspired the Tina Fey book. Uh, he inspired the Tina Fey book and Tina Fey's whole career. Right. Yeah. That, that book Those was are a, his hands. Yeah, they're his <laughs> arms on, on the, the cover. cover. Yeah, yeah. But also the book was originally supposed to be about James Cameron and he wouldn't allow it. So she had to change the name to Tina Fey. Yeah. I mean, she pitched a James Cameron memoir. She didn't want to write yeah. about herself. She wanted yeah, to write about well, James. You know, he forced her hand, but he did give her his hands. <laughs> yes. But only for the cover. His big man hands. Yeah. yeah. Um, He's actually looking very skinny these days. It's a little weird. A little. Mm. Have uh, you seen him recently? Yeah. I'm worried. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he's fine. Maybe he's just stressed. I'm going to show you a pic. He's anyway, stressed. He's got five on. Avatar movies. <laughs> um, yeah. He, uh, you know, it's known for not having, like, bedside manner. He's, like, just knows what he wants. He's exacting. He doesn't mince words. He gets it. England film production was a little more proper. They go on tea breaks. They work shorter yeah, hours. Apparently yeah. they would go on tea breaks. I mean, get right. over it, buddy. <laughs> he, like, flipped out about it. There was, like, a whole thing. I mean, uh, Sigourney talked about this at, like... <laughs> That's a wild picture also. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great picture. I just showed uh, Fran a picture of James Cameron and Sigourney Weaver on and, the and Toruk, two, the first flight. <laughs> red carpet. Red carpet with two Cirque du Soleil performers in body stockings. God. Body stockings. <laughs> yep. We saw this show, Fran. Yeah, I heard. This I is heard. our oh, bonus episode. Um, uh, so Sigourney looks... Like she's just <laughs> gone from thrilled to horrified. Like that we're watching the transition Her happen. eyes are so afraid. <laughs> Did you like it? Griffin? Uh, it, it was an adventure. It was an interesting right. time that we're I mean, going to talk your... about on the pod. Uh, Sigourney told this story. I don't. It was my idea. It was my idea. I take full responsibility. That is true. I'm happy I saw it. Yeah. I don't great. think it was I'm a happy great we show. went. Yes. That's a better way to put it. I got a great hoodie out of it, but spoilers. Um, <laughs> go on. I don't want to misquote this story, but I, I feel like what I remember was there was something where they wanted them to work overtime sure Cameron's hours and they were angry about that and they wouldn't pay for it and Sigourney 
threatened to quit unless they paid every. Sigourney did some Sigourney boss did move something where she awesome. got everyone. Right. right, right, right. But like they were sort of at odds the whole time with him. They didn't like him. When they started to see like the dailies, they were like, oh, I guess this guy's fucking good. But they right. were sort of arms crossed. And he sort of rallied them together. And after a couple weeks of rough going, he like got everyone together and they all fought for his vision. And then apparently he got up on like a soapbox and gave a speech at the rap that was like, I want Ben. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Hold on. I'll, I'll, I'll get it. Oh, Ben's got it. Oh, the soapbox. Oh, we're doing this bit again? Oh, this is not a good bit. It's one that we're doing a lot of. Okay, let me walk up the soapbox. Yeah. This is You haven't listened to the episode yet, but we did a stupid bit like this a few weeks um, ago. I'm James Cameron. Uh, he gave this speech that was like, uh, I want you to know you're the laziest bunch of pieces of shit I've ever worked for. This is unacceptable. Thank you for making my movie. I will never work with you ever again. You have no future in this business. <laughs> <laughs> and just like fucking told all of them off. Uh huh. And I think this movie was like a turning point for him where he's like, I don't fucking care. Right. Like, he's a, just, I'm a mean He's got man a blank now. check. And B, he was like, I'm making the movies I want. Classically. Feelings be damned. Uh, the crew of the Abyss, we'll talk about it next week, yeah. got shirts printed out that said, Life's Abyss, and then you die. <laughs> And they did not like working for James Cameron. It's nice to do any job where you get a shirt, though. It, that say. is true. And they did thank him later, personally, each one of them, yeah. for letting for the him shirt. get a shirt. Yeah. See, now, Griffin, I thought you were going to tell the story of the original DP of the film. Oh! He did fire the original DP mm -hmm. and replace him. What? Uh, he almost David, fired the editor, David, too. David, what's the name of that gentleman? Oh, shit, I don't know. You seem to know. Dick Bush. <laughs> 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 it is true. It's his name. <laughs> he wanted to light the whole movie brightly. What kind of a moron is this dick push? And Cameron was like, no. And he was like, we're going to light it or I'm not move making the movie. So they fired him. And they Sorry. replaced him with Adrian Biddle. Couldn't help myself. Who did a great job. The look of this movie is unbelievable. A lot of it was shot at Acton Lane Power Station in London. The the like sort of power plant shit like in the nest. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. Fran? I love a good warehouse movie. Yeah, I agree. It's a good warehouse movie. Could have used more sparks. Terminator ends with big warehouse. Mm -hmm. And Terminator Two ends with like a oh, smelting yeah, yeah, yeah. factory yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I do. That was. I feel like when we were kids, we thought that a lot, like a lot of movies, when we were kids, ended with like, and then they go to a factory that makes lava. Like yeah. when we were kids, lava was like a really the important substance. Yeah. yeah. And, like, kind of scary. And very scary. I feel like I... And I think I thought there was a lot of lava in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, that it was same. an issue. Yeah. Yeah, I was afraid. That you were going to fall think, in lava. Yeah, I mean, and Mario I think, as well. He falls in lava sometimes. Super yeah, Mario. Yeah, it was, like, a really prevalent threat for a long time. And now I don't even think about lava. You don't... When would you ever think about lava? I don't know. Great. I agree. Lord of the Rings ends with lava. Lord of the Rings? Uh, I think it's the last time I was sort of like, huh. That's the last time someone and needs to throw I'll something in lava to get rid of it. Yeah. I mean, we Tolkien, very inspired by Terminator 2. Uh, Revenge <laughs> of the Sith. Lava. <laughs> Revenge of the Sith. Sith. Revenge of the Sith yeah. has lava, of yeah. course. You've never seen it. No, I've never seen it. Yeah, I'm not 100% about, about this. I'm not 100%, but I feel like Volcano has lava in it. The, nah, the Coast is Toast? Oh, yeah. The I bet Pompeii did, but I never saw it. Pompeii probably had Tr some lava. Probably tried to like kind of reinvent. With Kit Harrington. Yeah. Hey, thanks for reminding me that uh, Pompeii existed. Yeah, it was a good time. I forgot about that. Um... It sure did. It sure did, Griffin. The year is 1986. Can't believe Ben put this fucking shit in the desk for it's, the stupid bit. This is bit. the grossest looking fan I've ever seen. <laughs> it's covered in like grease so and bad. dirt. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. What? The year is 1986. Hey, David, you've ruined the bit, though. <laughs> That's the soapbox. <laughs> the year is 1986. What? I was born, which is great. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a Taurus. Uh, mm -hmm. Fox launches no merchandising campaign because the campaign for Alien, the original Alien in 1979 was so disastrous. The parents protesting and the items Well, later. you mean the merchandising campaign. Mm -hmm. Yes. The ad campaign the for Alien is campaign. the greatest yeah. in the universe. Right, but the merchandising campaign was a disaster. I parents might side protested. with parents this yeah. one time. I mean, yeah, I think I parents maybe had a good idea there. 1986, no merchandise, right? But then the mid-90s come along. Early 90s, rather. Uh -huh. You know, some years pass. Sure. And Fox New Regime gets really into the idea of getting the Make Alien toys. franchise back up on its feet. Uh -huh. At this point, they're starting to percolate Aliens 3, Aliens 4. They have, like, eight different writers writing scripts for two different movies at mm -hmm. the same time. And they're like, 
Let's do two back to back. Let's get Ripley this. Yeah, the, we uh, want to get Alien back on the way on the radar, right? The Neuromancer guy wrote a treatment that's pretty good. Anyway, carry on. So they decide they're going to do an Alien William Saturday Gibson. morning cartoon show mm-hmm. called Operation Aliens. Really? In which all the original Marines are still alive and they're just bug hunting every week. That sounds nice. But all of them have been reborn as like weird half cyborg people with mm. backwards caps and like graffiti t shirts. Uh, what? A little less nice. There is. But you just like the idea of them being back. It's nice when friends are back. And they just, yeah. To hang out and hunt bugs. Uh, so oh. the show, they like create like key art and they go to companies huh, and they're look, like, there's a comic book, yeah. Make, mm. make puzzles. This was a poster. Okay. They were like, Looks make like puzzles, make bed sheets. Right. You know, like here's the key art of what it's all going to look like. And started to like, here they did like test animation of like this. And this is like Drake <laughs> with like a laser on his face. Yeah, like they're all gritted sure. and they're all like sort of G.I. Joe. It still like, looks pretty intense though, I gotta say. Out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think this was like probably. It's like early 90s, like X-Men style, like big yeah. guns, big muscles. But see, like this is a poem like with like cable. a robot arm and a backwards sure. hat. Yeah, and he seems to be punching a shark in the face. Yeah, and I think his t-shirt says no bugs on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, and that's the second part of it, okay? The other idea was that the aliens were now, and this later became a cornerstone of Alien 3, the aliens were going to take the form of different animals since the xenomorph is just... The, right, the, like say a xenomorph goes into a dog. Get right. a dog alien. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, goes into a hedgehog, hedgehog alien. So they were like, we're going to get fucking scorpion, praying mantis, bull, like gorilla, all this fucking shit. Mm-hmm. They set up all this merchandise. They did the cartoon show. They like did the like five minute test animation and we're like, eh, uh, maybe not. I mean, this is not for children. Right. Yeah, it's pretty scary. I yeah. think that was the thing. And the original, both of the first two Alien movies are R-rated, R-rated movies. Yeah. So yeah. they were like, this is a bad idea. But at this point, the merchandise had already been put into production. So like a couple of years before Alien 3, but several years after Aliens, in relation to a cartoon show that never aired, yeah. there was like a full line of like children's toys for Alien that were based on all of these Marines being like cyborgs now and also all the aliens being uh, animals now. So I want to pass this around. This is like the robot cyborg crew <laughs> and like the gorilla alien and the bull alien. It's one of the weirdest oh, toy lines God. in history. These are, I mean, the aliens are awful. Yeah. And you They're see like so scary. Ripley looks like a sailor. Like she's got like the yellow bandana. She's yeah. got like a yellow handkerchief. Oh, my God. Yeah, this looks cool. The aliens do look awful. God, they look... They got too many spikes. They look really creepy. They're all, like, really spiky mutated. No, Is I'm Bishop there? Spike. I want to see if I can find the Bishop one to show you. Um, Yeah. Oh, my God. Right. Look at Bishop. He's in the top uh, right. Oh, hell yeah. Now Bishop is very strong. He's very badass all of a sudden. The lines, the lines under his eyes are gone, and he's just biceps. Yeah, he's no longer like the sort of twitchy diplomat that he is in the movie. Now he's, he's also, the hot robot we've come to. Yeah, I mean, he's visibly a robot, whereas like, part of the thing in the movie is that he just looks like actor Lance Henriksen. He's now got like a metal head. Like he's got like a Terminator head where like the flesh mm-hmm. is right, barely Griffin. holding on. Sunglasses. Sunglasses and a robot space. body. Hey, look, it's the 90s. It's, it's the, the early 90s. 90s. I think it's a fascinating merchandise line. I'll post pictures, but it's a merchandise line that has like nothing <sighs> to do with the actual film. He used to do this for the Star Wars podcast, the merchandise oh, really? spotlight. So any chance he gets. Oh, for also, some weird I'll take it. Arcade I'm not game. Throwing away my. Aliens show. from uh, came out in 1990. It was uh, developed by Konami, the same creators of Contra. Yeah. And it had mm-hmm. a very similar gameplay. But it was a little bit more advanced, like, you know, graphics wise. And it was, I was obsessed with it. I used to go to a pizza place and play it all the time. That's Ben's arcade spotlight. Contra famously was like, one of the characters is clearly modeled after Arnold Schwarzenegger and Predator. One of the characters is clearly modeled after um, uh, Stallone and Rambo. And then the alien is clearly modeled after the alien. Like, Contra was like, they picked the three big. Okay. Like franchise and then just made a video game of it. I'm running out of steam here. Me too. Yeah, I don't want to talk. Fun was Aliens. I love it. Is Contra the one with um, A B A B like back forth up yeah. down like the uh, famous code? Yeah, it's a famous code. Oh, because it's called Konami, like, code. Konami code. Right, yeah, right, yeah. Right, yeah. Right. Oh, okay. And I'll give our listeners my famous code for making a great podcast episode. Asking Fran Hopner to be the guest. That's true. Oh wow! Thank how you do, so how much. How do you feel, Fran? Oh, I feel good. Thank it's you so much hot. for having. Yeah, it's a little hot. Yeah, you're it's okay. okay. Fran's fine. very um, uh, cool, calm, and collected. She's cool as a cucumber. Yeah, I'm extremely just sort of like Midwest. Yeah, okay. I come here, I'm laid back. Everyone's like, we gotta, we gotta go places. That's, oh my god, yeah. exciting stuff's happening, Fran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, huh. 
Yep. She's I'm seven foot two. She's nine and a half. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like trying to make plans with Fran, and I was like, "What do you want to do? You want to do this? You want to do that?" And you're and like, I was like, "Well, I'm just too tall." And you're like, "I'm on vacation. I'm tall. I'm Fran, and I'm on vacation. <laughs> I'm a baby. <laughs> on a vacation paid for by this podcast, of course, by the, blank check and UCB. And, yeah. you're, and you're at the Plaza or the Ritz or wherever the fuck you are. Yeah, the yeah, Plaza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like I'm at the Eloise. Plaza. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Eloise and the Ritz, right? We got you both. Yeah, just yeah. in case you want to <laughs> switch. Is there yeah. a Ritz in New York City? Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, you can put ob- on the Ritz. Yes, yeah, obviously. yeah. Put yeah. Well, Fran Ritz. is putting on the Ritz, Fran but she'd be doing that anyway. Yeah, she yeah. was a great guest. She's putting Ritz on top of her head. She so has a much. box of Ritz. Come crackers back anytime. And yeah. Obviously, we'll pay all the expenses. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, we're really weirdly flush with money right now. This podcast has become very. Just uh, to, Liquid. I just yeah. want to make something clear to anyone listening to this podcast that is not true, and we would totally appreciate your money if you wanted yeah. to give us. We some. have made a grand total of zero <laughs> cents <laughs> off of this podcast, and also zero dollars. Yeah, that's yeah. important because yeah. some people think, "Oh, well, zero cents, but five million dollars." No, nope, none of the mm-hmm. dollars either. No, didn't you find some change a couple months back? But in yeah, the room? no, th- those were bitcoins. Oh, okay. yeah, they were mm-hmm. fucking bitcoins. They're fucking suck. bitcoins, worthless. And you can't use those at an arcade. It'd be cool if you could, though. Makes you sense. Could. All right. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. All right. So we're done with Aliens. <laughs> Aliens is great. It's we're going to talk The Abyss next. It's a great movie. I love it. I love everything about it. Fran, you're the best. Thank you for being Thank here. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, fun, fun episode. Fun everything. Great life. Cool people. Have Make. Oh make <laughs> what are you doing? Everything wonderful. Uh, agreed on all counts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great time. Let's do some plugs. Plugs. Uh, Theatlantic.com. Uh, watch uh, the tick. Watch the tick. Maybe it's done. It's off. It's well, by the time this comes uh, out, it, they'll have pulled it from Amazon. Well, torrent it. Watch draft day. <laughs> watch draft. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Fran, got any plugs? Um, I don't have anything too big. Clickhole dot com. Clickhole dot com. I love the, the Conan thing. The Onion dot com. The Conan thing is so funny. Conan thing was so great. great. Did you see the Conan thing? I did. It was excellent. Um, yeah. I'm just. I'm out. I'm out and around. I'm got, a woman about town. Woman about town. Mm-hmm. Tall, a tall baby. and vacating. <laughs> uh, big, big tall baby around town. Did, I've got some news for you guys. Yeah. The trailer for Fifty Shades Darker, you know the film I'm yeah, talking yeah, about, yeah, yeah. has gotten more views in 24 hours than the previous record holder, Star Wars The Force Awakens. Fuck. It's a stat for you there. Talk about a thirst trap, right? <sighs> uh, that's, that's the news, and I'm David Sim. Great. Well, that was David's news, and I'm Griffin Newman. I'm Fran Hoffner. Fran Hoffner. Goodbye. And as always. Oh, boy. See, here's the thing. I had a really good one like 40 minutes ago, and now I've forgotten it. 40 minutes ago, I was like. 40 minutes ago, you mean when this podcast should have ended? Yeah. 40 yeah. minutes ago, I was like, I know exactly what my end is always is going to be. And it's going to be, as always. I'm trying to pull it, but I'm not going to. Oh, boy. Day 12? Day 12. Day 12. That's, your, that's oh, what it should be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And as always, day 12. <laughs> <laughs>